Hello everybody and welcome back to Wappleville for another live stream. I believe this figure is from God Slayer Miniatures. Not super 100% sure on that. But it's a Valkyrie right here that's part of this Storm Crow army. And you've seen a bunch of videos on these guys already. Now a little twist on her is that the wings are going to be actually black. And I'll... And I'll probably have to show this a couple of times here. Let's grab this. This was something also painted on a live stream. So it goes along with this this raven right here. What's going to be fun is that we're going to get a chance to paint this in oils. That other one was with the acrylics, and I just got finished. It's still wet because it only was painted a few hours ago. Let's see. I believe it was this one. Right there. That was the first time I actually had a chance to paint wings with the oils. And at least those wings, holy smokes, to say they were easier is like the understatement of the millennium. So I'm hoping that that translates here too. We'll go back to our, go back to this here. Now it might not be quite so easy. I don't think these are might not be quite the fine sculpting here on these as there was on the Dark Sword wings. But there's only one way to find out. In this cloth here, I'm just going to make it like this. We'll try and see what we can do to get this freehand pattern in there as well. What do we, we have a Kasos in the house. Kasos with emote splash. Lots of emotes. Oh, primer wise. People are always asking about the primer. We kept it real simple here. This is just a brush on Steiner Res. This is the ebony flesh. Poof, how are you doing, K Sauce, today? We're going to do some oils now. Just going to have some fun. Now, this palette here is still out from the last figure I was just doing a matter of hours ago. So, this it's, it's still wet, so I will. If I can bring it out, I'll bring it out very gingerly. Oh, we have Eeny Meenies in the house, too. Guys, be sure you follow Eeny Meenies because she, too, is playing with the oils and having a whole lot of fun. Doing lots of experimentation, kind of like what we've been doing here with them. Just, well, let's see what we can push the limits on today with the oils. It's fairly basic here. Got a little Payne's Gray, Cerulean Blue, some white, olive green, Actually, throw an ultramarine blue down here just for, you know, what's and giggles. We got a little bit of our light green. Terra Rosa, of course. A little yellow ochre. A couple of yellows up there. And a brown matter alizarin. And we are going to kick this off the way we usually do with a little bit of a pre-glaze. That's just my white spirits there. Oh, we got, we got Jonas in the house. How are you doing? Now, yeah, and Kasos is tired. Well, let's see. Uh, well, geez, what time is it getting to be by you? We got our sponges as well, but what we'll start off here is real simple, like olive green. Maybe even a touch of our... Maybe a little touch of our brown there. Our brown matter, which we love so much. Oh, and he's trying to absorb what you can. Oh, well, I I hope it's helpful, the <laughs> the random insanity that issues forth from Wappleville here. I'm glad that it's useful, because <laughs> they can get wild. They can get wild. You never know what's going to happen either. Oh, yeah, you'll find this hilarious, too. It's, it's hilarious. So, <laughs> I was going to film... Let me see if I can't grab this figure here. I think I can safely. So I went to film this... And I went to film the first stage, and I basically realized about 12 minutes in that I had forgotten to press record. And it turned into a teachy-preachy moment because I went in and I grabbed my sponge here and I said, Well guys, guess what? And I wiped all the paint off of it. And it was basically back down to primer in a few seconds, and then we started it all over again. So, another benefit of oils, when you forget to turn on your camera, you too can have some fun wiping away everything that you painted over the last 15 minutes. Oh, let's see. I, and Jonas says, good question. Are the thin layers you work with on oils, do you find it better to use a single coat of paint? 
I'm always mixing colors all the time. I the number of times I'm using just one flat single color is somewhere between zero and zero. Uh, basic logic behind that is well, there aren't really no colors in nature that are like that, and it saves a whole bunch of time in the end, especially with the oils. Well, actually, we'll bring her back. We'll bring her back because so you can see how there's kind of a bluish tint here and there's even a little bit of almost like a skin tone tint there you can see the yellows and the greens when I did the initial glazes that's what I did them with just mixes of yellows greens blues whatever and then when I started to go over those with the lighter colors those pre-washed things basically tinted what I was putting on there so it was like I was adding color to it for free without having to add color to it because the color was already there adding the white to it basically just brought it out some more so I guess you're gonna you're gonna end up seeing her a lot then because well <laughs> she's gonna be pretty handy I think for demonstrating a few things we got Bilbo's brush and we got JPEG in the house how are you doing so let's start to again this is not gonna be as essential that pre-glazing to make it darker because well it's a little bit darker Hello, little hobbits. Spark my ganja. well how convenient is that boy we are just having we're acing the screen names as Viking 45 chooses to follow with the Valkyrie yes indeed and well what we're gonna try and do here is get a little bit of our the rest of the army color into her especially on that uh, whatever that is <laughs> cape cloak whatever that might happen to be so here's actually a little touch of ultramarine violet here again a little bit of a pre-glaze sort of a thing we got some of the panes gray down in here we might even thin that down some more with the idea that the color that we put on here picks up some of that and the other thing I was emphasizing in that video was last night was working thin without working thin like this so you can see here we're using the the white spirits to thin this down kinda your more traditional way right well there's another way to thin your paint down and you'll see me do that eventually and it's basically just to do this you grind that brush into the palette and you really get minimal paint on the brush you would be some uh, amazed at how much oils can cover or how much how little oils can cover how much that's uh you would be surprised we got a beef in the hole too and grim d ah yeah painting well it's uh it's definitely more fun than just kind of painting by yourself and just the the noise in your own head hearing that we hear that all the time oh, let's see gonna let's see oh, let's see what we got here another question so I ran into some really cheap oils oh geez yeah the, the really cheap oils those will definitely let you down 100% of the time that's for sure ah but JPEG used oils on Saturday for the first time yeah that that's gonna be that's kind of different for everybody. It's it's a bit like the Scopey. When I when I tell people about baking the Scopey, I say, look, I can tell you how I bake it in mine, but your oven is not my oven, and it's going to be completely different. You'll just have to find that particular sweet spot of that oven. When we got a new oven, I had to do the same thing myself, and I knew that was going to happen. I wasn't looking forward to it. It was definitely not very fun having to go through that process again but it is what it is now I'm gonna go more even more to the olive green touch my brown matter here uh, just still on the OSL journeys oh, and we got draconic visions in the house too how are you doing as always like I was even saying last night when I first started to put the colors on there like this I thought oh man I gotta get back in here and wipe this away with my with my sponge right away and then I realized wait a minute no 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 this here is oils don't have to worry about that 
Uh, no problem. It was a blast. It, well, it's... I think usually I'm always missing yours. It's either maybe you had just finished or something like that. So I always feel bad about missing it. So it was great to actually be able to see you working on, on the rings there. That was pretty wild. Uh, let's see. Would you recommend put the oil paint on the palette that can absorb the oils a bit like cardboard? Well, in just a second, I'll show you exactly what I'm working on right now and you may find it humorous. Oh, by the way, she has to have black wings with the whole raven thing. And I'll show you why in a second. But first, we've got the same parchment paper that I use for the wet palette, but look what's underneath it. Cardboard. That's all it is. It's a piece of cardboard and this glued to it. That's all it is. It's enough to take away. It's not really whisking away a lot of the oils or anything like that. It takes away some of the excess. And I got to tell you, look at this. That's just from, I was still working on this at about 4 o'clock this morning. And 12-ish hours later, that is completely bone dry on there. Now, what do we got? Uh, let's see what you recommend. That oil paint. Yep, got to that. Good talking, but I don't know if the sound was turned up. It was definitely. It was a little. It was on the quiet side. It was definitely on the quiet side. So I think I had my volume cranked up super high, and then all of a sudden I think uh, an ad played or whatever, and man, that that got that got loud in a hurry. That got super loud in a hurry. So we're just taking some of the panes gray here. And again, the idea is that when we go over it with lighter colors, that's going to help alter those just a touch. And again, we've got our sponge here for taking some of that away. Not all of it, just some of it. I also like to cut the sponge up into smaller pieces, too. Let me get my scissors out here. Oh, Mini Dreadful has finally been able to catch a live stream. Just painted the creature from the Black Lagoon. Oh, for the horrified board game. <clears throat> Using ye old shaded base coat. Yeah, well, the oils, uh, it's, it's interesting because it really does put a different change on the whole shaded base coat thing. It's like we shade, then base. <laughs> It's like base shading coat. <laughs> I guess I'll have to come up with some other new name. It, heck, it took me a while just to somehow come up with that one. Now i got to come up with another one. So you can see how much is coming off of here. We leave some of it behind. Just a wee bit. Here, let's go some more here. Oh, we got Yesik. How are you doing? Uh, and oh no problem jpic oh that's probably yeah it just uh well there's a few streams that are just extraordinarily quiet where and especially if they've got music then the music actually drowns out the person and that's kind of one of the reasons why well i don't use because of the whole YouTube experience and everything else, there was never going to be using music in any of mine. I don't want to be talking over it anyways. My voice has a hard enough time. But that's kind of why I'm sort of glad we're seeing a whole lot less music in streams these days. Uh, oh, back to my pains gray over here because, well, these are probably going to be some kind of gold right here. So I'm just going to touch them a brown here no big deal more of that brown matter into I think that's about it now everything has something on there everything's got a little something on there okay I oh, wonder if people want to see a picture of, uh, oh, let's see, Mo's Magic in the house. How are you doing? Well, it's actually Kathy. I think she just started her D&D &D group thing, which they're doing online. But here's, uh, so from Saturday, there she is assembled and lit as best as I could. And she's already in a box and she's 
going to be shipped out tomorrow. And then, well, here's some of the stuff that we painted in oils. This was on the 4th of July stream here. And none of you saw that at all already. So those two guys, those were painted on the 4th of July. Those were both painted in oils. I'll go back to our, our live. Let's go back live here. What am I talking about grinding the paint into the brush? Let's find ourselves a spot. Oh, and you, know, you always want to have your paper towels handy. And we regularly clean our brushes. I mean, wow, we just thorough cleaning right there. Boom, that's it. And grab ourselves some of this cerulean blue here. We're just going to... And you can hear that sound. And as this goes on here, so it also starts to pick up some of the color that's already there. It's practically like a dry brush, but oils, there is no such thing as a dry brush with oils. But there is a nice feathered brush stroke. Oh, let me see. I just want to make sure I didn't miss anybody. Oh, we got uh, we got Tim in the house. Now Ken's watching some watching some Valkyrie goodness here. A little bit of Viking stuff going on. With the oils, of course, no less. This is a little bit of cerulean blue again driving that paint into the brush as we welcome in Calvadia. Uh, is that lava-looking Valkyrie the same one as you were working on? Nope. That was from Creature Caster. And let's put it this way, her base was the size of a DVD. So she's a good... Her wings are twice the size of this. That'll give you a little bit of an impression. Oh, let me see. Oh, that Kathy did. Seems the one. Oh, oh yeah, def definitely a different figure. Now I, I can bring it back again, and I can tell you about how high this figure goes. And this is at the highest apex of this figure here. So she barely reaches the knee. I mean, at like the top of her head would barely re reach the knee on that creature caster demon over there. So that kind of gives you a sense of just how ginormous that was. It's actually not the largest thing that I've painted. Actually nowhere near the largest thing that I've painted when I think about it. The five-headed reaper dragon, definitely bigger than that. That's on the blog. So again, just taking that cerulean blue, we grind it in there as we welcome in Zen for one. And the Roy experience. How are you doing? Yeah, actually, you will be seeing a whole lot more of the oils. And by a lot, I mean a lot more of the oils. Now, here again, I'm just going to take that brush. I'm just slamming it down in this area. This is the other advantage of the oils. I like to call it blind shading. I have no idea what I'm doing there. I can't see it. I can't see that whatsoever. I'm actually going to turn up my brightness here a kick. Since everything is much darker. Now I usually, and you've seen me prime stuff that's a, a little bit more along the lines of that kind of brightness. This is a little bit different. Here's that same primer again. That's just the ebony primer right there. And that's brushed on because I wanted to show folks that yes, you can brush it on. And this was the Dark Store tutorial I was just filming last night for the Patreon page. And I wanted to do this as a little bit of a pre... Just to see what it would be like painting wings with oils, because I hadn't had a chance to do that yet. And, oh my gosh, it is infinitely easier to do that. Way easier. Yeah, now his uh, he's got the, the blue and the purple and the green theme going on right to match his corn army, his chaos army. And I know he was doing the smoke as regular smoke. I, I'm hoping that he didn't do, he just has an axe for the other hand and not that, that crazy whip or whatever, because there is zero chance I will ever, ever be using any of the whips that come with those creature caster figures, because the nightmare of trying to assemble that is beyond anything that I wish to deal with. So here's another example again where we're just gonna take this brush 
to try and get the pain under here because I did not assemble this myself. So I probably would have tried to do something down here before this got stuck onto the base. I'm just going to put foliage there and fill that in so that, well, no potential gaps in the colors shows up. We almost, again, let's hear that sound of that paint being ground into the brush. Because this is the number one thing that I, I see happening to people is that they are probably putting five times as much paint on the brush as they actually have to. And that's making the drying time last several times longer than it needs to. And it's also leading to, well, paint being scraped away on subsequent layers. So there is not much paint there at all. Da, welcome in Armored Wolf to the house. And folks, be sure to check out, as always, the Armored Wolf Etsy page for not just dice bags, but journal covers. And there may be a custom-made Book of Wapple journal cover that I'm going to have to have made. I think that might just have to happen. Something that we could also then paint right here on a live stream. Now, for the metals here, I'm actually going to go... I'm going to do gold for some of these. Why? Because we did that on the shields over here on a lot of our Vikings. So I think we're going to do that. We're going to go... We're going to go for the gold on some of those armor elements. Still trying to get my all of my blue in here. I am going to reflect a little bit though, even though this is going to be gold, doesn't matter. I still got to reflect some of that blue there. And we still need more of this blue. And we need it here. And I'm going to try and support this a bit with my hand. And you can see how, how dry this is. How little paint there is on here. Oh, let's see. There and back a story. A story of the Wapple oil paint. Yes, indeed. And speaking of which, there's a whole bunch of Lord of the Rings figures that I've got set up for oils. Oh, speaking of changes and switching over to the oils, the Sister of Battle Army painting series that I'll be doing for my current Patreon page series. That is going to shift over to oils for several reasons. First of all, a whole bunch of people have been asking about object source lighting with oils, which I really haven't... I've only done it on a couple of bolt-action figures, ironically enough. And those sisters have a lot of flames and stuff going on. We have fluorescent oil paint, so what the heck? Give it a shot. Give it a shot. Okay. This is cerulean blue here. Let's do some more down here. Again, do you see me adding any kind of thinner to this? Nope. This is what I mean about painting thinner. And this is why these wings are not going to have a bazillion tons of paint on there. That's why they're not going to have a problem me adding more paint to it. Uh, let's see. Curious to see that OSL with the oil. The fluorescent oils are Marion Street. And I'll show you the container in just a second here. Just a second. Let's dig this out of here. It's kind of buried. There we go. And I have to say... After having used these, well, the, it, it's normal that the orange one is like the most effective. Well, orange and yellow are the two most effective of the fluorescent paints. To be honest, you almost you could do almost as well with, say, a cadmium yellow deep and a really something like a cronacrinol magenta or a purple matter or something like that. You're almost better off with that because... My experience showed me that they are actually very similar. Well, cadmium yellow. I mean, it's cadmium. It's practically glow-in-the-dark metal anyways. So that's why it's pretty effective. 
basically kind of mimicking the effect of a fluorescent paint. As yes, it says in Canada, we get most of these products, but we have to get them shipped in the States. So you always have to order in bulk to make shipping worth it. I don't, I'm try, I don't know where the, if Marion Street is a U.S. company, but all of the oils stuff that I get, that's just, I just get it on Amazon. And that's just the Windsor New, or the, so here's the, the set of oils that I got on Amazon. Ten of them, about 28 bucks. And these, I just get these from Dick Blick, and that's a North American company, and I think they're they're pretty darn good with their shipping. Some companies get a little bit crazy, that's for sure. Like more than just a little bit crazy. All right. And the idea is we let this sit here on the wings. That dark sword figure that I was showing you there, it was so small. It was a challenge to be effective with that because it was just that one miniature. Again, with the oils to be effective, you really want to be painting multiple figures. Okay, so we've got our nice little base on there. Let's start to think about some skin tone here. So we're going to take some of our Terra Rosa. We'll take a little bit of our yellow ochre, tiny touch of that white. And you can see just how dry that is. But remember, we've got that that coat of our little bit of a pre-wash on there, and it's going to start to mix with that in some places. You can see just how far, look at how far that little tiny bit of oils is going. In all likelihood, I won't have to go back for any more oil paints. Uh, let's see. By the way, I'd love to get you some custom sculpts if you're interested for 3D printing, if you're looking for larger scale figures. It, it would be, well, you know that I'm looking for, I really am looking for 72 mil. You know, 54s are, are good, nothing wrong with 54s, but 72 mils, that is, that's kind of the holy grail right there, because obviously the only companies that do any sort of 72 mil on a regular basis, they're the European companies, and they tend to be very fragile resin pieces they're they're nice don't get me wrong but they tend to be oh we'll just see a wee bit on the trying side to try and get those things assembled and ready for painting so yeah any sort of 3d prints and hey sending an stl file uh that's certainly a whole lot easier uh let's see what are the brand of floor paints uh, so you always have to order in bulk to make shipping worth it. Oh, Drax in, in the house. How are you doing? Uh, I just read the specific oil used in non-mini specific oils. Uh, you have to figure. So I'm just using regular oil paints. By the time they get in these jars, they've been combined half with the oil paint well, roughly. Every paint is different, but think of them. They've already been thinned down 50% with this to get them to the consistency of miniature paint. So what you're seeing on the palette is not stuff right out of the tube. You're seeing it out of here, which again is thin with the white spirits. You can see that I'm thinning it down even more by literally just grinding away at the paint here. And... That's how dry that is. Look at that. That's how dry it is. That's why this is not going to take three days to dry. As we have a Cuspus in the house. How are you doing? Oh yeah, so Cuspus actually, if you all for all you subscribers, if you check your email, inbox, whatever it is that's associated with your Twitch account, you will see uh, a video link to a previous tutorial basically showing uh, these guys here and you see the the freehand designs down here that was all these were painted with oils but I'll also show you how to do the freehand designs and oils as well so go check your all you subscribers here to the twitch channel and I, if you subscribe today I'll try to remember to send that link to you 
<laughs> if I can. I just want to make sure I've got my focus going good for you here after the Dark Sword figure. I'll see what I can do about making a 72 millimeter something. Yeah, it's it's just like, well, this lady here. So this was an Artisan Guild, and they did me the favor of scaling this up to 72 mil. Now this is before I got a printer, so Gary actually was nice enough to print this for me. And this is the kind of stuff that, that I could really use here because, well, hey, what makes a really nice subject for oils is something like that. Something nice and huge. So we started out with our Terra Rosa there. I'm going to take some of our touch of that titanium white there. Again, it's you can see how thin that is. That you can see. Look at that's. This is why when we do a nice little dusting over the top of this, it's not a dry brush whatsoever. I just we used to call it a damp brush back in the day, actually. And I'm going to go back into this with some of the magentas, some of the reds to liven up that skin tone a bit. But we're just in our opening rounds here. The approach is a little bit different with the oils as far as that whole shaded base coat thing. But still, one of our primary goals is to get rid of that freaking primer. Make that primer go away. Have new blank areas. Oh, let's see. Calvadia says, oh, no problem. Oh, and Angry Ham in the house. How are you doing? Just having some fun here with the oils. I mean, when is it not fun with the oils? Actually, I got a little tiny touch of the magenta over here. And we'll get a little bit of our magenta into this. Back here, too. I think the shield will actually... Ah, you know what? We'll do the light blue on that, too. Just to keep the, the army theme intact here. Now here, as I mix it with this, it's going to end up being a little bit towards the grayish side. Just going to mix with the Payne's gray and such that's there. I'm just going to lighten some of this. Oh, okay. Another area where I need some skin tone. Okay. No problem. And we've got plenty of that blue there already, so that's going to give us some already some shading there on that skin tone. All right. Oh, thanks. It's a angry ham. It's just the cerulean blue underneath it was the that sort of pre-wash of the Payne's gray. And you can see it just how look at again how dry this is. There's not a lot of paint on that brush, but look what happens when it hits the miniature. Now you know why people end up with too much oil paint on their figure. That's why I love the oils. That's why you don't use as much of them. That's why they're way more cost-effective than acrylic paints. Because the oils are not drying on your palette. They're not drying on your brush. They're not. They're, they're drying slowly. But effectively. Alright, let's get some of the golds in here now. Or something that vaguely will resemble that. Let's do, and again, look at this. We're going real dry here. I can't emphasize that enough, and I will continue to emphasize it over and over and over again. So, yeah, I think we're just we're going to do this with our golds here. There's going to be so much blue. It's the same reason why we did the gold boss on the shields of some of those Storm Crow. Because it was too much blue, way too much blue. We'll give this some gold too here hair not sure about yet not quite sure about they're probably going to go with the more of a reddish hair actually but see how that's starting to mix with some of the pre-glaze that you can see it on the brush you can see it picking that up on the brush same thing here you can see just how light of a touch that is with the oils don't bury it in paint 
I gotta I gotta come up with some kind of book of wapo worthy phrase for that. Uh, celestial beholder. Um, I'm not too much into the beholders. It, it's really more the the kind of human type characters. And that would also be kind of difficult to get on screen for tutorials, and kind of get all those eyeballs on screen. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Sorry, the keyboard borked. Anyway, do you have a problem with long-term storage of oils in those bottles? And not any whatsoever, because I'll show you one. You can even hear that agitator there. So this is the one of the original oil brushes that I made three years ago. And as you can see, that paint is just fine. In fact, let's just throw some out on the palette here. There we go. So again, that paint was made years ago, and this is just a nail polish, whatever thing. So <laughs> that was the original container. The only reason I started doing these is because I had to make a hundred of them for uh, Adepticon, and a hundred of the container that was not practical. So yeah, uh, as we woke up, Trader Legions, how are you doing? And Roy's going to have to bow out early. Ah, uh, Wi-Fi is... Oh, well, don't worry, Roy. You can obviously watch this later. And it's going to be made into a YouTube video as well. Yep, all, like all of those uh, those Viking ones. Speaking of 3D printed miniatures, the first two of these is already up on the YouTube channel. This one is... And where's the lady with the bottles? Yeah, here we go. So both of these are up on the YouTube channel to watch. Uh, let's see. Um, you can't. I won't have a chance to look at it, unfortunately. The My computer is not really set up to be looking at links that people send. It has a tendency to knock me out of all the screens that I need to be in. You can always just send me a message with that later. Or, well, even now, and then I'll check it out later. Because I think you should be able to send me a whisper. I th I do believe so. All right, now I'm going to take some of this. That's some of the olive green here. Going to mix it in. Let's get some colors here on our boots. May not end up being that color, but for now, I'm just going to, yeah, I'll probably go a bit more brownish on the boots there. We won't focus too much on those. There's a bunch of other things that are way more important than the boots here. But we are going to get some gold here on that sword hilt. Again, a nice dry approach here. Keeping that dry. Okay. Gotta just figure out, okay, what's going to be gold, what's not. I have not had any chance to really study this figure, like, at all. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm seeing it pretty much for the first time as you guys are. As I keep painting a different area, I thought, oh, I didn't know that was there. I didn't know that was there. I didn't know that was there either. Okay, let's get some stuff on the base. Welcome in Deadbeat Artist 2. Uh, it's wing like the Valkyrie and a construct, so totally different. Um, yep, deadbeat. Oh, uh, oh, excellent. Asthma day. Yes, I was hoping. Hello, little hobbits. Spark my ganja. Well, now this is quite the confluence, folks. So we got RPG Saloon, and we've we're gonna go to Wapoville. So I changed this, guys. Remember what I was talking about over the weekend because the, the first re chat reward didn't do what I wanted it to and I told you about the town of Wapoville. Welcome to Wapoville. I told you the whole story about it. I got just a couple of pictures here. That's part of the town. That is not all of the town. That's just what would fit on a 6x4 table. There is much more. Oh, there is so much more. And I'll be putting more pictures up as time goes by, but actually I still have all of those Wild West Exodus figures for the most part. Uh, you can see that pink building over there. That is La Flamant Rose. That's the House of Horizontal Refreshment. 
we've got the church, we got the jail, we got the undertaker's house, which was always very busy in Wampleville. Yeah, there's a little closer up look there. Yeah, and there's the train station there with the the werewolf guy standing at that. That was very, very fun. So RPG Saloon, your timing, as they say, was impeccable. Because there was a sal there was a saloon uh, sal uh, saloon in there. Yes indeed. Uh that was Miss Fanny. Oh, actually I even have some of the figures that were and this is just a tiny portion of some of the figures here so let's show here's a couple of them here oh and these the bases that you're looking at all that mdf terrain all that stuff was wood burn terrain from uh, burn in designs all that leftover terrain that's all this is that's literally leftover pieces of mdf well there's a little plastic gear on there but yeah these I had so much fun with these and then there was a couple here these were the Worcester sisters and their <laughs> their thing is at uh, finishing school they were working on some science projects and they were working on rats and as you can see they made themselves some rather large pets so yeah these were all part of our Wild West Exodus universe those are some bombshell miniatures and the Reaper Bones rats right there it was definitely, now the original version was definitely a Weird West when it got bought and changed. Uh, no, Vecnon, it was, that was, that was one of my favorite things about Wampleville, was the House of Horizontal Refreshment. Yes, indeed. Now let's keep this towards the drier side, too. Let's get a little bit of lights onto our golds over here. Again, you can see just how dry that is. Uh, let me see. Uh, but thanks again, Asmodee, for for taking that reward there. And like I said, I will. I'll get more. And more. I've got dozens of pictures. If you want to see more of that, just head over to the blog. Go to the Wild West Exodus section. There's probably 20 battle reports there. Maybe more. And they're usually three episodes long, and basically covered how the the lawmen and the outlaws pretty much every single battle destroyed most of the town of Wampleville. Then actually, one of the interesting things about the game—I don't know if it's still part of it or not—but the civilians were on the board. And you rolled a d10, and they would go randomly in a certain direction, in a random direction, every turn. Which uh, led to some hilarious moments. So those were for our Wild West Exodus games. Way back in the day when we used to still play Wild West Exodus. That was a, that was a favorite game of mine back in the day. Until it kind of all got changed, and, and all of the... Well, U.S. history portion of it basically got wiped out, and it became Malifaux 3.0, and we said, well, that's not for us. I still have all the stuff. I'll maybe try doing some stuff with it again using a modified version of the old rules that I make myself. Because, well, there's a bunch of us here that still have all that stuff. Uh, let's see. Oh, I think I got all of that caught up. Yes, that was... I just loved the... The whole idea was that the the town of Wappleville was the capital of a territory that wanted to become a state. And, of course, it was being fought over by what was left of the Confederacy and what was left of the Union because, well, things happened. <laughs> And it's like the 1870s or 1880s and the Civil War is still happening. But check out the blog because you'll see the gigantic engine, the big siege train that that was printed out for me by Burn-In Designs. There's a lot of fun stuff to see. Right, let's do some stuff here now on this sword. Let's do something here. Let's get a little bit of color on that. And, oh, look, we're actually going to go a little bit lighter here, too. 
we'll get some other colors on this. We're going to get our usual requisite pinks and magentas and other type of stuff. But now that I've got this here, I make a slightly lighter cerulean blue here. Let's start to hit this, make this guy a bit lighter. And all I'm going to do is quite literally just slop some of this on here and then we will do a spot of blending like you do. And let's get some of that here. Let's get some of it down here. A little bit up here. I'm going to clean off our brush here. Oh, we got Duty Foodie in the house. How are you doing? Uh, let's see. Uh, do you win most of your miniature games? Figure Distractor with amazing paint skills. Well, unfortunately, what usually happens is they lose horribly. Mostly, I guess it's because the armies that I choose, like Tomb Kings. Yeah, that, that didn't go so well. I, I became a verb to be Tomb Kinged. I remember the tournament was uh, one of the last, it was the last fantasy tournament I ever participated in. So I had the brand new Tomb Kings Army, and the very first game on the very first turn, some orc player fired off a, I think it was a Doom Diver or something, which killed the, what was it, the Hierophant, and the entire army disappeared the second turn because that's what happens when he dies. And then there was the game, the next game after that. So the games were supposed to be two and a half hours long. Within 18 minutes, a dwarf player with like 15 organ guns, three anvils, and whatever else that was shooty had basically blasted everything off the table in 18 minutes. And I said, well, let's go get something to eat. That was the first time I'd ever had a chance to eat anything at a tournament because... Let's put it this way, that my first two games of that tournament lasted less time than it took me to paint one of the skeletons in the army. And that that's why I will never play Warhammer Fantasy again. I will never play Age of Sigmar. Because the guilty party is still the guilty party. And there is nothing they can do to convince me. I still can't believe that's the same party that makes Lord of the Rings. Which, now that's a different story. That is a very different story. Because my Easterlings, well, let's put it this way, they've uh, they've caused, caused so much harm to those little Numenorean wussies that they have begged me to play some other army that's not the Easterlings. And I'll, I'll show you some of the Lord of the Rings armies. Well, And my bolt action stuff, too. Nobody wants to play my early war French because the very first tournament that I ever did for bolt action was with my early war French. And it was really fun seeing them nuke all of these late war armies. I mean, it was, it was high, Larry. I enjoyed that to no end. So actually, uh, yeah, I actually managed to win that bolt action tournament. Well, it was a tie for first. <laughs> Believe it or not. And then I was just showing actually some blog links today on the Warlord broadcast of my 1944 Fulsham Jaegers. Which was also a very interesting experience. Yeah, uh, the last time I played 40k... Uh, well, here, I'll show you my last army. We can we can see that, because I actually have pictures of that here. This is a tiny portion of it. So I had all of these completely converted vehicle emulators. I had an exorcist that I made from basically from scratch. I had a giant cathedral display board to go with it. Uh, yeah, that was that was very fun. But as far as our Lord of the Rings armies here. Let's let's go. So this is one of the new ones here. It's going to be a combination of Harad and Kand. Well, and Far Harad as well. And I loved making my bases there. 
And this will be, you know, I have, they say I have to start playing good armies. So I'm making a Rohan army. And, of course, Del Amroth. Another one of my painting series here. Oh, and Army of the Dead. Morgul Knights. Actually, I combined the Morgul Knights with my Easterlings. Oh, that was even nastier. Actually, I have a, a battle report on my YouTube channel about that. Now, Angraham, really like the style of the Dark Eldar. Might look into some smaller games. Oh, thanks, Vecnon. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. You know, let's, uh, let's do something a little bit over here with some Payne's Gray. Touch of this green. And I will add just a wee bit of my thinner to that. But you can see how that, that brush is being ground into there. Now, it also has a nice filbert shape. But yeah, the Tomb Kings, that was very disappointing. That was super... Well, and then they just blew them up and got rid of them. So that right there, that was... Uh, well, and then they also wiped out my Imperial Guard because they took away the characters that were in my army. So they've they've done a lot of things to make me say, uh, nope. And that's why I continue to say, no thanks. With Lord of the Rings, the game just has to stay stable. They can't ch they can't change the lore. They can't blow up the universe there. Now, I'm, obviously, I'm painting a new Sisters of Battle army because, well, I had to sell off the old one, and I would really like to have some of that back. So this is another, this is one of my new army painting series that I'm working on right here. So this is my new Sisters. Yeah, actually, it's uh, the, the Sisters themselves, I'm going to switch to painting those in oils. So that's going to be very fun. We've Oh, yeah, we've got, uh, I'm still continuing that same theme of obviously fire for the army. Oh, we've got Scully Joel. I uh, hope Tomb Kings will find their way back to the table. Oh, thanks. Thanks very much. Have you painted any Ossiaric Bone Reapers? Funny you should mention that. I've got everything for the Ossiarchs except the whatever the four legged dudes were. Those guys, I don't have those, but I have all the other stuff. And actually, I have the cab is already prepped. Now I'm just going to add some green here, because hey, right, green with oil, with gold, you got to do it, got to do it. Why else am I doing it? Because if these wings are going to be more along the lines of black. Well, I better reflect some of that onto that gold. That's actually another couple of army painting series that I'm going to be doing is on the Ossiarchs and some more of the Patreon vids, and I'm going to be painting some of it here on the channel as well. Because people said, well, okay, Jim, this is as close as you're ever going to get to having your Tomb Kings back. And you had to get rid of those, including scratch-sculpted stuff. Like I said, go to the blog, you'll see scratch-sculpted Tomb Kings. Oh, we got Drax in the house. Uh, folks, if you're not already following Drax, you probably are. But if you're not, give Drax a follow. This one's resin, Drax. This one's re oh, and I'll since we got new folks here. So this is the thing from Saturday here, and Drax will recognize this because he's painting one on his stream right now. So there she is, Queen of Cheetos. In all her glory, assembled, glued together. She's in the box. She's ready to be shipped out. Supposed to be today. It'll be tomorrow. And this get some other stuff here. Painted in oils. Now you guys, you guys saw this being painted. You also saw this, but you didn't get a chance to see any of the finished pictures because I just made those today. This also went in the box, and that's heading up, gonna be heading up north to Canada. And we got another thing in oils here. So this I was just working on earlier today. This is the latest Dark Sword tutorial some wings so i thought well let's do some more wings on this i'm uh, hoping to get her finished this week so skull taker okay that that's what he's called i i didn't know what he was called i did not know what he was called so look at how dark this is in comparison but look at how you know, light it ends up looking on screen why is that because we got so much dark in here already we were very efficient at getting some of our darks in here 
Now I can definitely tell this does not have the sharpness and detail of that dark sword figure, so it's going to require a slightly different approach on the wings. Not a big deal, not a huge surprise, because dark sword's kind of unique that way. Uh, that's oh, I think he's Herald of Slaughter. I thought he was uh, because he's basically flaying himself, right? That's the whole idea behind those guys. At least that's what I was told. That that's just you're not looking at his skin; you're actually looking at his muscles underneath there. We're just getting ourselves some of our cerulean blue again. We're gonna find ourselves a spot over here where we can sort of grind that into the brush, and let's get some lighter some lighter tones in here now but we can only do this so much see how we're picking up some of that dirty color what do we got to do we got to go back here we got to get some fresh cerulean blue that's been lightened up a bit and in this case I'm just gonna place it on here and then blend it afterwards so I'm just placing the color here Do some of that right here, too. More here. More there. We'll go back in, and we'll blend that. Different brush here. Grab something here that we can use as a blending brush. Oh, let's see. Christopher's can't get over the big Nurgle Butcher. I've been seeing a number of people's... Uh, yeah, actually, uh, what's weird is I just saw one a couple hours ago that looked an awful lot like mine, and I'm thinking, I just, I didn't remember the person being in the Twitch stream, so I wasn't sure if they'd seen it or if we had just done that independently. So here, we're just going to take some of this, and Joss going to blend that very gently like so. Minimal amounts of oils, way less paint. I mean, take take the amount of paint you think you need for, for doing a certain thing with your oils, divide it by 10, and go with that. Because that's about how much paint you actually need. And I've, I've been thinking about it, wondering, well, why is it that people are using so much more of the oils than they need to? It's because of acrylics. Because with acrylics, you kind of have to use a bunch of it. It's not, it is so different than oils. It's not, it does not translate to the surface very efficiently whatsoever. Oh, let's see. You know, Tomb Kings, boy, they, it was a, it was a really fun project. That was the, my Zinch Tainted Tomb Kings army. And actually, I scratch sculpted several things for it. That's why I'm looking forward to the to the Osterix, seeing if I can translate some of that color scheme to them. Now, one of the things I want to do is instead of, well, some of them, because I've got, I think, a couple of units of some things, and like basically some repeats, on some of them, I'll show you how to do the bone stuff in traditional oils, but I also want to do whatever is bone I want to do it as metal because I think that would be way more fun than just oh look lots of bones and skulls so in some ways they might end up looking like zinchi necrons oh uh, let me see there we had to move from the computer and got the hot pad for the back oh boy oh yeah the back problems uh, hopefully hopefully it won't end up being too miserable there Seems like everybody has all kinds of back things going on. It it's like uh it's weird. Every other person I keep talking to is oh my back, my or my neck, all of those things. Uh one second here, let me uh I gotta get package.
Sorry about that. There was literally a UPS guy banging on the door trying to pick up a package for an Amazon item that was meant for this very room that failed horribly. And I think I talked about it. It was that little device for cooling just a small area and it was supposed to be a quiet way of doing it and it would last for two to four hours effectively and eh, maybe maybe five if you're pushing it and it was just for cooling this room quietly and that just completely failed <laughs> plugged it in all the lights were flashing it never worked so it went back in the box and now it's now it's gone thank goodness Let's see, compare this to, so we're getting about to the same, same value of lightness. Now I am going to see if I can grab a bit of ultramarine blue here. One second. Tiniest, tiniest amount. I don't want, I don't need very much. That's all I need. I mean, even that, I might not use all of that. But you can see how that changes this away from green, almost makes it a little bit towards the reddish side. Now we're going to get some of that into here. So we're just going to change that color slightly. Just, ah, here's our ice elemental. So here's another one that we did in oils. Lots of cerulean blue and ultramarine blue on this. Actually, this is on the YouTube channel, so you can check that out there, too. Uh, let's see, the caster for the Osteorx looks cool. Uh, they definitely... Well, let's see, what's the uh, uh, Lumineth, right? That is the newest one. It's hilarious, but... You're seeing now, when, now that the regular people have access to it, you're seeing some way better color schemes than those horrible ones. Well, the horrible white color scheme that GW did with zero shading, zero interest. Ooh, actually, thanks for reminding me because Green Stuff World just popped this along, and this will be the yeah look at that so this is going to be our our base texture here for the lumineth and i'm just looking at some of the nifty designs here so there's like a butterfly and stuff and you got this tree here so it could be potentially almost like some kind of gondorian type theme i don't know or a lathlorian type theme basically maybe very Oh, some some Malor was it Malor trees right? What were those big old trees? Ah, can you imagine a an army display based kind of thing for those guys where it's a bunch of those Malor trees, all kinds of different levels and such. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see if that works. Boy, I really like that that tiny touch of the ultramarine blue. Really switch this around because it was it was looking a little bit on the greenish side, and now that ultramarine blue completely. It was a tiny bit of it. It's, it's all it took. Really changes this around. Whole different look now. Oh, let me see. Oh, Nessie in the house. So Nessie, we did have, uh, we, we got to see the town of Wobbleville. Well, the first uh, pictures that I finally got ready for the stream. I'm going to be getting some more ready for the stream. But yeah, we saw the town of Wobbleville. Because, well, you heard the story about the train station and everything else on Saturday. So yes, now you can actually see the town itself in all its glory but like I said there's more on the on the blog so we're just doing this little Valkyrie here and it basically kinda has to match our previous Storm Crows painted now Asmodee has to go to sleep at 2 a.m. 
Well, thanks again for stopping in, and I, I can't thank you enough for redeeming the checking out Wapoville reward. So I hope you have a good night's sleep there. I'll try and do a, a late night stream, maybe on Thursday or something like that, so it's a little bit uh, more friendly for your time zone. Yeah, the, the old Wild West Exodus stuff. That was actually the interesting thing about that is it was the first non-fantasy stuff. I'd never really done any kind of steampunk stuff before. So that was that was very new for me. That was really new. Oh, we got a Thunderdome Drew in the house. Speaking of sore necks and backs, hopefully your neck has not been acting up. But folks, be sure to give Thunderdome Drew a follow. Check him out. He's part of my part of my late night crew. One of my buddies in the late night, like Drax, and also. Check out is uh, are they war grips right? That's the name of your holders that you've been working on. So if, yeah, if you want to toss a link to those or something like that in the chat, feel free. Now I just the, that same mix of the ultramarine and the ca and the cerulean blue. I just threw a little bit of white in there, and now we're starting to lighten this up. But minimal amount of paint. You keep that paint to a minimum. And remember, thicker paint always sticks to thinner paint. And what what's the little game that we're sort of playing here? Remember, we're taking this paint and we're grinding that into the brush. Which effectively makes it thinner without the use of thinner. How's that sound? How's that for accused, uh, confusing potentially the heck out of people? Like, what do you mean? That's very thick paint. It has no thinner in it. How is it not thin? Again, this is the difference between oils and acrylics. Oils will let you do this. Acrylics, not so much. Not so much. There's barely... I mean, look at this. That's how much paint is on the brush. But look at the impact that it makes here. Now, remember, hashtag no thumbs, thumb free. I think as I use the, the oils more and more, I use less and less of the white spirits. And by less and less, I mean like darn near zero. Ah, so war grips is what they're called, okay? Yes, indeed. And I think the... Your, the big exotic, well, not big necessarily, but the most exotic item is where you can have one of your painted miniatures basically sort of set in resin, clear resin, and you've got a one of your own painted miniatures as a holder. So how does that sound for wild and nifty? And that is, uh, again, all from... From the Thunder Dome. It is almost like. Uh, it's like sorcery. I got to tell you when. So I, again I just uh, finished filming this. When I was doing this. It was like the easy button. All I had to do was just. Push the brush around. And all this stuff happened. I mean it was it was amazing. Which is why I'm going to just keep keep working with the oils now. That there's a couple of other reasons why. Just because the the paint world has kind of changed a little bit this week. And to me this is now the perfect time to just kind of make the switch to oils almost completely. Keeping in with my... Cerulean blue, but then I'm just going to have to stop there and I'm going to have to think about that shield up there. So again, we're going to try and get some of that excess paint off of that brush there. And let's hit this shield now. Am I going to put a freehand pattern on there? Most likely, since it is 
Well, obviously a character type figure. I'm just going to leave that there. We're going to now do our reflected light in here. Reflect some of that blue onto that gold. Let's get a little bit of this onto these wings now. We got that little touch of green in there, which is nice. Something to just make it a little bit different. And remember, look at look at how thorough we we cleaned this brush. I mean, look at that. That is a good thorough cleaning right there. Then we go back to our cerulean blue here, some of our white, touch of our ultramarine. You can hear that grinding sound, getting that paint ground in there. And just find where I feel these, this should be a little bit lighter. But as I do this, remember it's picking up what's there every single brush stroke. So I've got to go back and get some fresh paint. To go back and get some fresh paint. Hey, we got Cuthbert in the house. Uh, let's see. The other night you showed a craft brush you made to a stippling brush. Now I can show you in just a second. Just a second because I want to let this, want to let everything on here just have a few minutes. Let's do a little bit more here. All I did was take a scissors and chop that off. So here's a couple of the brushes in question. So you can see what was done here. We snipped this off, basically made it a nice flat brush. And then here we cut it at an angle, which makes it for splatter, for stipple. And we'll just find one here that's kind of on the beat up side, maybe. Where's one that's really been kind of tormented? Well, actually, well, let's just do it with this one. Where's my scissors? So this one right here. Here, we'll just give that a little bit of a trim there. Now we've got an entirely different type of brush here. I'll look at this. Actually, I'm kind of curious. Oh, actually, wait a minute. Check this out. I think I just got myself a different type of brush. This is pretty wild. That's kind of fun. That's kind of neat. I like that. Let me get a little bit of the paint out of this and see. I just made myself a different type of brush here. So that's kind of cool. I'm going to just trim that down a little more. Yeah, that's kind of cool. Made a new brush out of a brush that I got a lot of use out of, and it only cost 25 cents. Maybe 25 cents. Probably not even that much. So that's kind of sweet. Yeah, a little cerulean blue into that. Let's see, uh, one of the things I'm not used to is uh, using white spirits to clean the brush when changing paints. Oh, yeah, so I, I told Kathy Numskull, I was telling Kathy about the the Deutschland uh, lesson there. And the the Malin, that not, not pronouncing the H, right? Avoiding pronouncing the H for the mall stick which, as it turned out to be, was a, oh, what is that? Uh, basically, I use it for holding the, the camera, the mobile phone, when I'm using that as a camera. All right, let's start to get some lighter stuff going on here with these golds. Let's do that. I'm going to just get out some more of my titanium white out here. Chuck that right over here. Start to mix it with some of our 
later stuff here like this cadmium yellow medium over here again we grind that into the brush start to get some lighter colors in our golds uh, copper it's uh, I think it was needing a, a stippling brush yeah it's you can make a flat brush out of it you can make a stippling brush you saw I got that crazy angled brush now I uh, there's just you can kind of make whatever you want out of these brushes you can't really screw them up because by that point the brush is pretty much toast anyway now now how's this for well uh, some would say being cheap but actually I had no choice because I had no static grass and I was doing a vehicle weathering class in person at a convention and I needed something that would a be a stippling brush and a chipping brush but I also needed something like static grass so we took the bristles that I chopped off and we used those as static grass because I wanted to have grass and mud stuck together in the tire or the in the uh, rolling the uh, the wheels of the treads and stuck in some of the treads so that was pretty fun doing that that was that was hilarious actually doing that so again we're just taking this lighter again grinding that paint in there <laughs> yeah that was uh that was a pretty wild session there was I know, nine of us in the room there and oh that's right we wanted to, to see that was the first experiment of painting with the weathering powders and the rubbing alcohol that was the first chance I really had a first time I really had a chance to mess around with that Yeah, working some more of my golds in here. Sword hilt. We're going to be doing some of that glazing stuff. I kind of figure, is that hair right there? What is that supposed to be? I'm not quite sure what that's supposed to be. We're going to have to figure that out too. So again, sticking with that that gold armor theme for now. Or we go back in here with some of those darker glazes now let's say that here we'll leave that darker for now too some kind of a mask there maybe let's see if we can do some flesh tones on this oh yeah this was the other thing too we we're in that the video that I was doing last night here we go so I forgot just how much because look at you can see uh, one is a wee bit older than the other one. This thing has been around since, gosh, like May or whatever when we did the, the giant. Th this, I was painting this big old bust with that thing. Where are we at? Where's my black heart stuff here? Yeah, the Caracolila bust. I was painting that thing with this tiny little brush. And I've been using it almost every day since. Oh, look at this. Creature caster in the house. Yes, well... You got some stuff that's on your way that that will be that and and that will be on its way. So yeah, welcome in Creature Caster. We're just doing some more oils here. And we're talking about how these brushes just, so this is the new one. This is the one that's been seeing a lot of action. You can see visibly, I mean, look at that. That's the exact same brush. But you now you know what I mean how this brush takes punishment and still actually is usable. Make a look at this thing. That is how much of it I'm sure it was like this when I first started hey, using it. Spark my ganja. Hey, hey Tarisk, how are you doing? Uh, oh and Wicked Elf. Wicked Elf folks, uh, be sure to go to visit the Wicked Elf miniatures site because if you type in, I believe, Wapelius, there's a, there's a discount waiting for you, and I'll just let I'll let Wicked Elf describe that particular discount that's awaiting for you. And I'm anxiously awaiting some very cool vellum foliage, folks. Some sea plants, yes, indeed. 
subterranean plants. And what do I mean? Let's just bring up Mr. Troll. So there we go. Look at those fantastic vellum plants. They are hardy. They are strong. You can paint those any color you need to. And the nice thing is, is you got you see you got the bundles of them, in all different fun sizes. Uh, let's see. Oh, Achilles in the house. Uh, let me see. Painting my siren. Just uh, just checking out the old chat there, seeing what's happening. Uh, the test plant should be there today or tomorrow. I I don't know if we've looked at the mail yet today. My guess is probably tomorrow. Because that was a big envelope that you sent, and I don't remember seeing... Well, of course they probably tried to stuff it in the mailbox. But hey, those vellum plants are tough. They can handle that. They can handle that. Okay, so now at this point here, I want to get some more of my... Where is the... Ah, here it is. Boy, this, uh, the paint that's in this jar is actually about 20 some odd years old. Oh, just started playing with the Pro Acryl set. Um, yeah, let's get just a little bit of this out here. We don't need very much. Doesn't take much. That's it. And as you can see, it's consistency of miniature paint. Now we're going to get a little touch more of this. We're looking to get a little bit of rosiness in a few places here. Let me grab this. And generally, you can kind of see, so obviously your cheeks there around the elbows there, here. In some places where you've got blood vessels near the surface. There we are. So it doesn't really change your, your value or your light or dark very much, but it does give you a little different color there. Do some more of that in here and on the face here. Again, trying to give that a little bit more of a rosiness to it before we start to make that a little bit lighter. And let's do that. We've got plenty of. Oh, we've got. Is that Reiner? Oh, Reiner. Uh, oh, Reiner. Thanks for the sub here. Let's get what Peleus out here to. But then again, he's going to get chased off the screen, as happens all the time, as we welcome in Jinxed. But Reiner, be sure to check your, not Patreon inbox, your, your uh, inbox for your Twitch, because I sent a, whatchamacallit, a video link. Actually, it was doing oils and freehand. So it was actually some of these guys right here. So I was just doing some of the, the oils right there in, in my freehand. So... Folks, give Reiner a follow and also give Jinxed Art a follow because that's where you're going to get all the skelly goodness. You get the skelly goodness from the Jinx. So how have you been doing, Jinxed? Hopefully you've got your... that the Twitch schedule is all pretty much figured out now. Or will it remain the same of the usual Friday late nights and, and such? Actually, that's her forehead right there. I was thinking that was part of the crown or whatever. It's not. So again, just getting some of my white spirits in that. We're a little different approach than what we've been doing with the minimal paint applications. Oh, just making sure that I can see. Yeah, Drax, that was definitely some really cool colors on your Queen of Onslaught. She definitely is not Queen of Cheetos. I guess there can only be one Queen of Cheetos. Now that we've got that in place, what are we going to do? Take that, blend it out. Let's get some lighter stuff going here on clavicles and other such things. Then we'll try and get some some purples and some greens also in our skin tones. Oh, something a little bit lighter on those knuckles. 
Gotta remember a little bit of a horizon line there. Let's lighten up the back of the hand before we start to think about our other colors on that. Back into our can add a touch of the quinacrinone into that. Uh, is that purple matter? That is, uh, oh, here it is. <laughs> Look at this thing. Look at how ancient this is. We're, we're talking the mid-90s here. And why she ended up with a 200 milliliter tube of this, I have no idea in the mid-90s, but that's kind of how that works. Or, yeah, something like <laughs> This thing is colossal. So, yeah, I could make a thousand uh, of my containers out of this big boy over here. Oh my gosh. And that is testament to how long oils will last. I know people say that the the GW paints that they got 20 some odd years ago that they're still good in those jars. And they're like, oh, okay. Yeah, fine. How about oil paint? That'll be good 30, 40, 50 years later. I mean, provided you don't step on the tube or something like that, it should be just fine. This jinx says magenta for life. That's pretty much it. That thing is going to be there forever. I'm just going to have to do an entire army that's just based on nothing but magenta. Like just magenta and white or something. Just so I can try and use some of that. It's either that or I, I make a thousand of, of my... Wapple oils, paints for people or something like that. And it's nothing but magenta. It's the only color you get is magenta. Uh, let's see. When will we normal mortals have a chance to get the Queen of Cheetos? Yeah, well, well actually, I mean, all armies could be magenta. Well, actually, uh, Drax, weren't you using the quinacrinone on some of your, on some of your, you actually, you were using it on your not Queen of Cheetos. Get a little bit of our blending here. Okay, eyes. Yes, uh, these, these kind of, these goggles here are a little bit, they're going to make things difficult, that's for sure. Those are definitely going to make that interesting. All right, how's about a little bit of our... I almost wanted to call it Cobalt Violet, because that's what's on my mind right now. For some reason, Cobalt Violet, not sure why. I'm going to get some of this onto our skin tone now, so it's not all just rosy red. It's going to look almost like gray by comparison. But it is actually a purple, which we're probably also going to add to our sword blade over here. It's going to be time for some dark glazes to at a certain point here. And like I said, I was just using this palette 14, 15 hours ago. And that was like that this morning. It was just dry. So again, these the oils can be dried quickly. They don't have to take days and days and days to dry. I know people, they, they kind of assume that and they think that. Remember how much paint we were taking away from the brush. We were just really scrubbing away at that brush on the palette to get rid of as much of that paint as possible. So that way we could paint thin without painting thin. And that's what our latest Dark Sword video is all about. Gonna go back in here with a touch of the cadmium yellow light. And sometimes you have to find out, okay, this is pretty thick right here. I have not thinned that down. And look at that. It sticks. 
So going center right there probably wouldn't see. It's sticking right there. Sometimes going center is not always the answer. Letting that blend with some of that greenish color that we had. Remember, try and reflect the wings just a touch there. Still not quite sure what's going on with these crazy goggles that she's wearing. You know, I will get a little bit of my more orange type yellow in this too. Oh, I'm okay with this. Uh, oh, unexpected. How are you doing? Ah, so Drax is using. I th I thought so. I could I could swear I heard you mention the quinacronome several times. Oh, and it just kind of looked familiar too. All right. Uh, at this point, I'm gonna throw in a few little glazes here. A couple little glazes. Gonna grab me one of the liner brush type things. This is where our white spirits comes in. Some of our brown matter over there. Give it a couple of dots. Ooh, that is nice and orange. If it gets too much, then we'll just grab a little bit of our olive green. But just see how thin that is. There's, Look at that. It's, I don't want to say watery because it's not water. And let's do a little bit of glazing here. By glazing, I mean, I'm just going to literally touch this to the surface. And I'm going to let the oil do its own thing. This is something that your vehicle guys do all the time. It's either called, they'll either call it a pin line wash or, or, or pin wash or panel line wash, one of those two things. But we're going to see how that all of a sudden restored a whole bunch of shape to that. And we're going to do the same over here. But you can't brush away. Like, you can't do that. That This is not acrylics. This is oils. It's got capillary action. Let's use that. Look at that. Look how it seeped all the way across. I'm just going to touch it one more time here couple of dots that's all we're doing is just literally painting with dots now do the same thing here you can see how it starts to flow on its own I'm just literally touching the brush to the surface I realize that relinquishing that kind of control can be scary but that's kind of how the oils work when you're trying to do your glaze thing like this. You can see how that really does bring back a whole bunch of shape. When in doubt, add some darks. Can't hurt. Hmm, how about a little touch of our purple in with that too. I'm going to drop some of that right here. Uh, Ladande, how are you doing? Welcome in. You're just doing a little bit of glazing wet oils onto wet oils. And this is one of my favorite things to do because it does tend to freak people out when they see that. And the more sadistic part of me really enjoys that. Now oh, I'm just gonna almost go straight up white spirits there and really let that soak in. Key is you just gotta let this be for a while. You can't go back in there and screw around with it. You just have to let it stay there, do its thing. Oh, just rolled out of bed, uh brain no work, caffeine. Ah, for whatever reason the caffeine thing just doesn't work for me. I wish it did, but it just doesn't. It's kind of sad. When I realized that I was drinking a lot of caffeine right before I went to bed and I was falling asleep just fine, 
when I knew that caffeine didn't work for me the way it worked for other people. Now also, it depends on the miniature when you're doing this kind of pin line, glaze, panel line, whatever you want to call it. It depends on just how that detail is sculpted and how that is cast in there. It makes a big difference. So that dark sword figure that I did, I, I was able to get 100% precision with the glazes. Other figures, they're not cast so well or sculpted so well. Eh, the result, results may vary. We'll just we'll go the old advertising route there. See, there's some more places where we can do a little bit of this glazing here, like around some of these rivets. on the shield over here and you can look at how it defies gravity I mean it's, it's really going straight up this way it is going against gravity which is kind of one of the other cool things and then yeah I can blend that in just a touch too grab some of the olive green over here and change the change your glaze a little bit here get gotta make sure I have enough of the white spirits in here to make that flow we're gonna do the exact same thing like we did on the other side just touch it a couple times and let that flow into all the little crevices and cracks Change it again by adding a little bit of the reddish brown in there. That's the brown matter. We got crash and burn in the house. Oh, thank you so much. I appreciate that. It's. I know I'm usually doing some really weird stuff too. Well, like this glazing wet oils over wet oils. It's designed to horrify and traumatize. Wow, that really stuck. That went all the way around the back of this. That is very cool. I mean, that's what it was supposed to do, but it's always cool to see it doing that. So that really changes this around. Let's see if we can also get some more. Yeah, I'm going to do an even smaller brush. One second here. even smaller brush see if we can really target something here there we go so look at that yields a whole bunch of shading with just basically a couple of dots do that again. Do that again right here. Look at this. It's like I'm I'm taking a rope and I'm just pulling that rope along. It's pretty hilarious. Alright, a little bit of shade in there. Mm, what's gonna happen over here? Not quite sure with that yet. So now we've got our darks back in there, starting to get some little more shit. What are we going to do with this hair? Do we make it a darker hair? Oh, we're going to go with a more of a reddish hair. That's right. So let's uh, let's do that. That's kind of a reddish color there. Nice, deep, rich red in sort of a glazing fashion. I think that's kind of the final piece to the puzzle now as far as, well, what are we doing on each of these areas? I think that pretty much now defines what's going to happen with all the major areas. Let's go to a smaller brush here and let's work in some, let's do some stuff here on the, okay, let's define a couple of things here. 
Again, that's still practically a glaze right there. Next up, I'm going to do some glazing on the wings. To darken those down in a few places. Going to get some darker stuff in her goggles. I mean, she's really more like a motorcycle Valkyrie here. Uh, what would that be? Thor's Angels or something like that? That's uh, not quite the same. Different kind, kind of motorcycle gang. Now Angry Him has to get off to sleep. And Dead Peter says, Nothing is forbidden, all is permitted. Oh, well, the Sidrian, that's... Uh, every time I would work with the acrylics, I just... All I would say is, man... All I could think was, geez, I could have been doing this in oils. And I'd say, well, man, I could have done this in oils. And eventually it was just, it got to the point of, well, hashtag why acrylics? That, that's pretty much it. And that is why you will just see even more. If, if you thought you saw a lot of oil painting before, there's just kind of an interesting little confluence of just the way things have played out. And I'm hoping that August is really, 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 really focused on oils. Just kind of had to do with getting caught up on a few things. And I do believe now we can really go all out on the oils. I'm hoping if I can secure some more, some more funds here in the next week, I want to try some, there's some more oil colors that I want to test out and see what those will do. So now I'm just getting some of our darks back in here. And before, do some glazing in here now. And that glaze is going to be a lot of panes, great. Well, maybe even a touch of ivory black. So we're going to, let's liquefy up that panes gray a bit. As much as we can. And it's got me a big old liner brush here so I can hold plenty of it. Let's begin. Starting with this area that's a little bit deeper here. We'll work our way out. And again, it's we're just touching the brush to the surface, letting it do the work. We let it get down in all of those little crevices. And it's amazing. I mean, anything you think with acrylics, what was it, contrast paints, is it's got capillary action. It's like, it's just, I laugh at that capillary action compared to what oils can do. Yes, it has some. But as long as it's a water-based thing, it will never have. Heck, even the weathering powders with the rubbing alcohol slash pigment fixer, even that just had true, genuine capillary action. Uh, let's see, Crash and Burns is would always be a good choice for a noob or stick to the basics. Uh, in some ways, if you start with the oils earlier, well, then you don't have to... Uh, I hate to use the term unlearn, but what have I been saying here with a lot of the stuff with the oils? Like, what are some of the major problems that people run into is that they, there's too much paint on the brush because they're used to acrylics, where you kind of have to pile up the paint on that brush. Whereas with the oils, it takes way less. Oils are also way cheaper. I mean, that starter set that you see me show all the time, that was, what, less than 30 bucks? Well, let's use, use contrast paint. Look at You can see the difference there, too, between the two wings now. So this is our unit of currency. We'll just go. We'll we'll call this on the cheap side. It's eight bucks because not talking about tax and other things. So for I believe the price of four of these, I can get ten of these and darn near a small container of this. And if you want to add 
one more of these. So for five of these, not only can I do that, but I can also add my brushes because, well, yeah, they're five bucks. So a dozen brushes is uh, less than one contrast paint unit. So just it's something to think about. Something to think about. Will it be challenging? Yeah, but but well, just like three D printing has been a challenge for me because I have not done it before. But as I keep doing it, I learn more. Well, at least I learn what questions to ask, and the more I learn what questions to ask, it's easier for me to find the information that I need. And of course, you can always ask me questions. There's that too. We're just gonna look at this. This is mostly just, mostly just the white spirits. And you'll notice, like, I'll go over here. You can see where some of those glazes they start to become less glossy. Back in 30 minutes, they'll look darn near dry. They're, they're not dry, but they won't look shiny anymore. So again, just hitting this with some of our... some of our glaze. Letting the capillary action do its own thing. Just look at that. Just pull it right down the length of that feather. And all of a sudden, where we didn't really have much in the way of definition, all of a sudden there is definition. You will have to, I guess that one of the biggest things with the oils is to learn how to be a bit more on the delicate side with the application of the paint. And that's, that's where not having to unlearn a lot of the acrylic stuff comes in handy. Aha, uh -huh. that's the other thing I wanted to do with this. We're going to get a little bit of our ultramarine blue now into this glaze. And that's going to go on our shield here. Which should hopefully also bring out a little bit of our the wood grain. And a little bit more of my just the white spirits here. Making this go right down to that area. See? There you go. There's your capillary action doing its thing. Capillary action from the oils. Hard to beat it. Might even do some of that here, actually, just to make that darker. I might even toss a little bit of that right here. Grab a blending brush of some sort here. And we'll blend some of this. Like so. Nice and soft. Look at that. Looks like an airbrush just hit it. And that's the other thing, too, is you won't need to be worrying about airbrushes if you want smooth transitions on things. Something, yeah, that you'll be able to just kind of not have to deal with cleaning the airbrush, doing all that airbrush type stuff, compressors, but yet kind of still have the same, the same effect. Now I need to get some more. Now that I've done all of those, those glazes, let's go back into our golds. We got some greens that we're going to throw in there like this. Here, let's get a little bit more yellow to mix with that green. Even that's our cadmium yellow light mixed with actually a cadmium green. Let's see what we can do here on the reflected light side of 
this what about on her helmet here or the crests Let's get some green on those nothing like having green on your golds I mean obviously that in your purples too Let's see if we can't throw some eyes in here or at least some just some kind of light thing to indicate they're there It's hard to tell where they actually are. The goggles definitely make that challenging, to say the least. I'm just going to chuck a little bit of lighter stuff on those goggles, just, just to have it there. Oh, let me see. Using acrylics and watercolor painting, but never used oils. Haven't painted a miniature before. No, no water-based oils here. This is this is the real deal. This is just regular oil paint. None of the water-based oils, because those just do weird things. Anyone that's ever tried them has always had something weird happen to them, and yeah, that's why I just advocate. Look, the the regular oil paints. They're inexpensive enough. Just get the real thing. You'll you'll definitely be glad. I know that there's a temptation. It's just like me. I'm tempted to get the water washable resin. And I've been told multiple times. It's like, well, yes, it has some benefits. It does some neat things. But there's also these things that aren't so neat. So I'm just sticking with the usual super nasty resin so now now that we started to get some of our lights in here it's really going to change this this around I'm also gonna to have to take a look again at the skin tones and see how does this affect the skin tones now that these are suddenly lighter any brush here can be a blending brush just like that So now that we've got that green in there, we start to get a little separation from the skin tone, which we're going to also start to add some lighter. So we can go way lighter with that skin tone. I mean, we just we went a little ways, then we stopped, and we went off to other things because that's kind of what you do. You always progress and move on. Uh, pun expected asked, do the oils just help brushes keep points? Uh, actually, those brushes when they're new they have that type of a point believe it or not however the oils most definitely it acts like a shampoo and conditioner it it literally does it there are some of these older Windsor Newton series 7 they were destined for the garbage until I started using them with the oils and I can show you oh ones like uh well, here's a good example for you. Ones like this that are literally just one hair. That's all that's left here. And it actually works really well as an oil painting brush. Oh, thanks, Nerd House Minis. I appreciate that. I'm, I'm glad that they're... I, I try to make them have just chock full of as much information as possible. But not too much so that it's kind of overwhelming. So hopefully... That is the case for everybody. Uh, let's see, Mini Dreadful. Looks like I'm making a trip to the art store to get some oil paints. I'm telling you. And just think of how long that first set has lasted. It's not even halfway used. And it's been around for four years. Almost four years. Oh, let me see. Do oil that... Yeah, I got that question there. So what do you use to thin down the paint? It is... The same all the time here. So this is my Mona Lisa. It's from Speedball is the na overall name of the company. They do a lot with calligraphy stuff or pitiograph pens. So Speedball is a pretty, that's kind of a big company there. But it's a very high quality white spirit. It's odorless paint thinner. Now if you're in Europe, and maybe that's a little bit harder to get, this is actually a very similar thing right here. So this is from MIG Ammo, and you can certainly get this in Europe. Basically, I was running out of this, and I needed a substitute here, and that's the stuff that I found. 
Uh oh, Sidrian is jealous of uh, of Mini Dreadful. So again, this is not even the lightest skin tone that we can put, but you can see the difference that this is already making. Gets him on the chin, on the upper lip here. Get some lighter stuff going on with the cheek here. And I have to make sure, is this the right... Do I need to have any of my white spirits in here? I'm, as long as the paint's covering like this, that's kind of your verdict. <laughs> the answer is no, because the paint's covering. If it's not covering, that's when you have to start thinking about more of your white spirits. So now we've got more of that magenta going in there. Let's see what we can do with that. Let's see if we can get some of that onto the face here. Let's get some of that right over here too. I mean, maybe we'd do a tattoo or something like that. Also, just chuck that in there. That could be fun. Let's uh, do some fingers over here. I think you can see that. That's the other thing that when I was doing the Dark Sword figure there, and I'll, I'll bring it back. The other thing was to, to show just how you can do detail stuff. Uh, let's see. Oh, there used to be a Dick Blick next town over. Oh, man. That's, I, I love Dick Blick. That's where I get all my stuff from. So here's a little comparison here. So one of these was done in acrylics. One was done in oil. One had fluorescent paint on it. The other one just had regular paint. No fluorescence. And now, it doesn't count for the people that have seen this little exercise before. That does not count. Which one is it? Which one's oils? Which one is oils? Which one's acrylics? Which one is it? This one. So this was done with oils right here. Standard phthalo green, some white. This is actually on my YouTube channel, as is this. This actually was done with acrylics and fluorescent paint, and yet this doesn't have the luminosity of this. Just right, and look at the, the weathering, looks exactly the same, right? No difference there. Looks quite the same. Both videos, again, are on the YouTube channel. And that the other big advantage to the oils is that, well, clearly in the working time, because I could do an entire army of those in far less time. And by far less time, I mean wee less time. Start to maybe think about some going back into our chain mail here a bit. Ah, oh, Grumdy, watching you paint that night haunting oils is what sold me on the whole concept. Oh, I would definitely say, JPIC, that that is a good idea. Actually, I have a bunch of night haunt style figures of all different types. And I'll be doing, for sure, an army painting series on them, but I'll I'll have them on some regular streams, too. Now, the other thing, too, if you actually wanted to practice non-metallic metals and oils, well, uh, what are they called? Stormcast? Yeah, the Stormcast guys. Oh, actually, I've got one somewhere. Ah, here we go. So I have one of these set up for a little bit of an oil painting thing because, you know, Handy for not uh, the fantasy primaris primaris marine right there. So yeah, you can't go wrong, I think, with those. Now I'm going to bring out a few of these panels here. Now that we've got our see how those glazes just they're already they don't look quite so glossy anymore. There's you don't see the liquid now. And I can go right back in here and start painting to my heart content. And really start to bring out some lights here. Look at this. Look at that. You must have dark to show light. That's in the Book of Wapple. Basically, what I have discovered 
and I'll, I'll show you the thing that really, and this basically convinced everybody that saw it, including me. So this was the thing. This was painted in oils. I mean, look at this. And we're not talking about lots of exotic colors necessarily here. So where's our, there it is. That was the thing right there that kind of, that was the turning point for oils when people saw that. And they saw all of those magentas and blues and everything. That's just cerulean blue. It's a little bit of the cronacrinol magenta, some of the, the ultramarine violet in there. Now, granted, I did try the fluorescent green and fluorescent orange oil paints, but I almost didn't need them. I almost didn't need them. So that, that's, the, that's the thing right there. That made... Because uh, what do most people think of oil paints for? Weathering, right? That's what they think of them for, for weathering, earth tones, because a lot of oil paints are earth tones. Until I started to realize, well, wait a second. There is more to oils than earth tones. Ooh, that's a Book of Wapple thing. Uh, Nestor, all the folk, you know what your job is. You know what your job is. That, that's got to be sent to me. I need that. Someone has got to send that to me so I don't forget about that. Now I'm also going to try and get more reflected light here if I can. Over here too. They are just, there's nothing like oil paint. Well, it also has to do with you know, what they're made out of, too. But think of this. Oil paints are naturally a little bit more translucent than acrylics are. And that is that means you're going to get the light's going to shine through the oil paint and bounce back out again. And that's going to give you that that higher saturation. Cuz I look what's happening here with just the on this piece of armor here. And even though we're not using any of those brighter colors necessarily, it's still that little bit of green right there. It's got just an, mm, a little bit of extra zip to it. It's really something special. Let's go a bit more of our yellowish color here. Let's uh, do some stuff on our wings. Let's continue on with some of this chain mail here. But look at this. This is wet oil on top of wet oil on top of wet oil on top of wet oil. And yet I'm just I'm painting that as if I was just painting it in acrylics. Okay. Let's hit ourselves a couple of these guys. Again, hit them in green. Just cause. Some of them in more of an orange. Maybe some of them even in purple. Because what says gold better than green? Especially when you've got these dark, basically bluish black wings right next to it. Some lights right there on that part of her head crest. So we went in here, we added our dark, and now we can go back in here with some light. And each time, a little more control. Back to my green over here. And now you can see we're getting a little bit of that so reflected light now. Let's go right up there. Get a little bit of our great mixing with the the glaze that just 20 minutes ago, if I tried painting in there, that would have been kind of a disaster. So oil paints, think about it this way. <laughs> oil paints are like comedy. Timing is everything. Oh, uh, okay. Another Book of Wapple thing. Nestor, somebody, you know what to do. I, I, I got another job for you there. 
I think that's one I've meant to make for a while, but I keep forgetting. And if someone actually sends me that in a whisper, then I'll remember. And by timing, it's one of the tougher things to get with the oils. Look at this. Those, right, if I try painting those, yeah, about 15, 20, uh, maybe, yeah, between 15 and 20 minutes ago, that would not have worked. It just would have become a slurry. There's no way I could have gotten this paint there. But look at that. See that nice line that I get there? All of these lines here would have been impossible. And you can, you can see the difference that makes versus over here. Because this is what we had not long ago was that. <laughs> so much wet oil. It is, it's wet on wet on wet on wet. Was that like wet on wet blending? <laughs> this is wet on wet on wet on wet on wet blending. No, thanks. Thanks, question burn. I appreciate that. It's uh that that's kind of cuz uh, usually there's the the Bob Ross right of miniature painting but the Boris flip that's now that's really cool. Well, especially given this uh, given this subject right here. Now he must have painted more than one Valkyrie type figure or or painting. He must have Now, of course, we also remember we want to do some sculpting and in the last in the episode on Saturday there were some some links provided to 3D or some uh, scanners for scanning some something sculpted in 3D but here too for folks that maybe didn't get a chance to see on Saturday I do have some some 2D art and this might explain some of it too so let's go back take a journey back in time shall we to the 90s here boom so that's a watercolor but that's on hot press watercolor board and believe it or not there actually was some airbrush on there you can see it you can see it in the background there's also some colored pencils on there that's actually made into a puzzle which only Kathy could put together not me this is some of the stuff that I want to sculpt a bust of Jakar a bust of Londo and then paint them because hey that would be really fun and now we're going back even further in time. We've got some pastels here, and while we're we're painting golds now, look at look at on our that you look at that and say it's yellow. You see greens. You see some purples in there. Stuff that looks almost like blue, but when you look at that, that you say, well, she's wearing yellow. And then some wolves here again. You can see how directional brush strokes, right, are. are several types of contrast there's warm versus cool there's soft edge versus hard edge and then this again just there's no airbrush here that's just acrylic paint if you head over to the blog there's lots of art to see there lots of 2d art i did that for quite a while i think actually this year is the first year that I've been painting miniatures almost as long as I've as I was doing the 2D art. So that kind of gives you an idea just how long I spent doing 2D art before I ever touched a miniature. Okay, this thing right here, that needs a horizon line. Let's do that right there. That is helpful. Now let's get some lighter tones in here on some of these rivets let's bring those out again it's all wet oil paint remember this was that was just a bunch of glazes not long ago same goes over here on the timing this could not have happened when I was in the middle of doing all those glazes but now that those are on there now that they've had a chance to set I'm going to see, maybe, you know, I'm going to zoom in here a bit. Why not? Just going to zoom in for you guys a little bit, make sure I got some focus going. Some focus, focus. 
and then you know it's going to be time for some noir we haven't done noir yet so we'll have to go film noir pretty soon and the veterans of Wapleville you know what that means you know what it means to go noir we're going dark we're hashtag no saturation hashtag no color wheel I think it would still be hilarious to do an entire stream in noir it would really freak people out that are coming into it for the first time can you imagine raids on a film noir day that would be hilarious so what am I talking about film noir camera controls zoink there goes the color color is gone but the shape remains you can still see so even on our skin right here so you bring this color back you can start to see you've got some parts that have a little bit more of the greenish color a little bit more of the gray a little bit more of the magenta uh, let's see, I'll add your colors and how you lay them out in the miniature. Make me think of a uh, favorite artist, Basil Gogos. Gogos. Well, thank you, miniature. I'm going to have to give that, uh, well, actually, if you can, I don't know, shoot me a, a whisper PM or something like that to remind me to look that person up so that I can see because I, my curiosity most definitely has been piqued. Most definitely has been peaked. And like I say, if you're looking to see some of the 2D art, just head on over to the blog. There's a ton of it there. There's pages and pages. Check out the Arthurian series. I still have drawings on watercolor board that I never actually painted yet. Which now I'm real tempted to paint in oils. really tempted to paint in oils so once again I'm just I'm just cruising along here now that my glazes have had a chance to dry I'm seeing something here I might put a hmm I'm gonna go with the, oh yeah we'll go with the blue that's what we did on some of the other ones that had some gemstones so this is basically ultramarine blue here We got these. We'll just do a semi glaze over the top of those and see if we can do some metal type things here on the sword. It's just so darn easy. It's it's like criminal how easy it is. And it's not that it's super hard in acrylics necessarily, but this just makes it so much easier. And it's like, look, we got our light and dark thing going on real fast. It's like you basically touch the darn thing, and it's like, oh, yeah, metal's done. It's like, wait a minute, I only just put three brush strokes down there. Metal's done. One, two, three, metal's done. Now in here... Oh, let's just uh, do some fun magenta kind of stuff in here. Why not? It ain't metal if it ain't got pink on it. And there we go. So now it's officially metal. We added some pink. Oh, let's add some to this side too. So easy to blend all that stuff. My goodness. Oh, let's see. Draconis Visions asking, what is the smallest brush that I use for details? Well, this is, these are about the smallest brushes. Actually, this is it right here. That's the, that's the smallest one. That's my Winsor Newton Series 7. Whatever the, the smallest detail is, that will have to, that will have to suffice. And I can still go lighter here. I can still go light in a lot of these different places. Even here on the bracers here, or van brace, whatever it is. Uh, I'm used to more leather type bracers, not necessarily armored bracers. 
and go a little bit lighter there. We'll do the same here. I see I need to thin that down because if it doesn't stick, well, I have to thin it down then. And now it sticks. Sometimes that's all it takes is just to thin it down just a bit. What do we have? I'm going to let this stuff sit on here before I try and do my usual sort of blending on that. Let's see if we want to go lighter here with the little bits of fur that are in that lining the boot there. Oh, what the heck? Why not? So many of the other parts of it actually are, are much darker. And if I feel the need, I can always do another one of my little glazes in there. Back to some of my yellow here. Are they watercolor brushes? They're a specific type. No, this is just a standard sable brush. It's all the same brushes that I use for acrylics. I The only changes that I make for oils is that I'm, I'm using the white spirits instead of water. Other than that, everything is exactly the same. I was using all of these same brushes on that the Queen of Onslaught or Queen of Cheetos, whichever. I always like Queen of Cheetos. I was using the exact same brushes on that figure just Saturday. And what's the Monday? Yeah, just a couple days ago, I was using these brushes on with acrylics, same exact ones. Uh, let's see, what are you using? It is the same kind of acrylic. What palette? Lots of painters. Oh, so the palette. Now I use the exact same. They're just doing a little bit. Look at that. Look at that reflected light on there. And see how it's greenish? Why? Because of this. Because of this. All the stuff that's around it says it's got to be green. Because if it's gold and it's reflecting blue, it needs to be green. So look at that. Handy reflected light there. So the palette that you're seeing... All it is is the same parchment paper that I use on the wet palette. And it's just been, uh, what is that, uh, glue stick? Yeah, glue stick to this piece of cardboard. That's all it is. And it's just like an Amazon box that I chopped up, and that's it. That's all I did. It is that simple. Now, oh, that, oh yeah, that's for pun expected. Uh, the other thing, too, that I wanted to mention... At least as far as the you know your your palette thing goes, it's designed to whisk away just a touch of the excess oil. It's not designed to soak it up like say a, someone that would be using a paper towel because I've I know some people they use a paper towel, but I don't need to soak up that much of the oil. I'm just it's just a little bit. That's all, just a little bit. Now you can see we've got our little rivets back in there. But what we don't have, what I feel we lack, is actually some orange in our golds. And it's going to be sort of a mid tone orange here a bit. We're taking some of that brown matter, some of our terra rosa. And this is where we really spice up our golds here with some orange. Same even over here. Do the same up here too. A little brush to blend some of that. We'll get a touch of that in here too. Yeah, just look at that. See a little bit of the orange in there and I could probably do a little more however it's going to be a little difference here we're going to take some of that terra rosa we're going to mix it with our cadmium yellow light so I'm going to make sure that's on screen for you And 
And I'm looking to get right up in here. Good enough. Do I have an... Ah, okay. This is another area where I'm going to need that. It's going to be hard for you to see. Yeah, let me take away some of that. Didn't need all of that there. Okay, and now... Where's my, ah, here it is. I'm just looking to get a nice, bright... Right on the top of that. Good enough. That's all I was looking for. couple of more touches of white now on these wings. And it's not a whole long line of it. It's just it's little dots here and there. Little dots here and there. Thinking about maybe getting some more lighter tones on the skin. Let's do some stuff on the lips here. We haven't really messed around with that much at all. So I'm going to take some of that brown, mix it with the magenta here, get myself a decent darker red to mess around with. get that defined a little bit better. Upper lip. Take some of this now. Mix this in to get the lower lip. Ah, good. You can see I was, I was worried. I just kind of dragged it off screen a little bit. There we go. We can make that a little lighter. Okay, now that starts to, yeah, there we go. Let's do something with the belt here as well. We haven't, uh, we don't have a whole bunch going on with that. Also want to get some more light here in the chain mail. And here I'm going a little bit thicker now. Thinning it down last, going more with the straight up paint here. And a couple other things too with the oils is that they really should not be drying super glossy. If they're drying super glossy, now some oils are a little bit more naturally glossy. But you can take a look here. So here's some recent oil painting stuff. This is with no dull coat on it or anything like that. Do you see any gloss on there? <laughs> Not really. So when if you're doing your oil paints right, when it dries, boom. Should not have tons of gloss on it. Uh, unexpected as parchment paper and cardboard. That's all it is. And quite literally... Just glue stick it because all I have to do is just peel that right off of there. That's all I got to do. Now, for me, it's kind of important to have that there because, well, I sort of need it on camera in the same spot. So that was that's uh, that's kind of important for me to have that in the same area all the time. Just gonna double check here, and make sure they're both kind of pointing in the same direction. You don't want to cross-eyed Valkyrie, I don't think. That might not be quite so quite so intimidating. And I've also seen there's Yeah, that's a separate piece to her, her goggles. It's almost like she broke her glasses and she put some masking tape there. <laughs> So, to have that not look like masking tape, maybe we'll see what kind of metal type effect we can get on this. Maybe with a little highlight on the top here. 
Okay. And then, if it's possible to get some yellow down in here, uh, let's see, color theory is a weak spot for me. I feel I don't push the contrast enough. Well, now, I think you've, you've heard us talking about the difference between the color contrast and the value contrast. So this is, well, it's something you can do with your miniatures too. But we'll do this here with our camera controls. We just zoink, like we take away the color. Now we've, we've been working on this for a while. You can still see the sky is there. You can still see some of the highlights, right, that are here. Let's look at uh, that. Look at the, the skin tone. There's shading in the skin tone. But we bring this back. Look what starts to happen. You start to see the, the magentas. You start to see the green that's in there. You start to see all these different colors. That is a whole other type of contrast that just uh, doesn't really get talked about. It kind of gets lost a bit. It really does get lost a bit because everybody is, is very much focused on how light or dark something is right and you're getting your feedback or whatever uh you did a painting contest whatever the heck it is and they're they're saying well you need to push that contrast you need to it needs more pop right we hear that all the time well that doesn't really tell you a whole bunch so maybe actually you just you grab your camera you know you grab your phone take some pictures all phone apps now have some kind of thing that'll let you at least turn your picture black and white. And as soon as you do that, boy, that should make a big difference. I would just suggest trying that. Now I'm just going to take some Payne's Gray here and just hit that. I'm not quite sure what that's supposed to be, but we'll just make it whatever there. No big deal. What I'm also going to do is maybe fool around with the the wings in a bit have to figure out what's going on with that belt and I'm um, actually this is not really a bad idea right here mm. no I, this is a better idea this bluish green over here let's see what this will do right along here that's yeah that'll uh, make a nice little difference from the the gold-ish type colors won't mess around too much more with it because you'll just have a tough time seeing it actually but I am gonna do some more stuff in here I'm gonna get some of my purples in here if I can see if I can get my brush in here in the right spot there we go and again that is the same Winsor Newton series 7 that I would use my acrylics well I can tell you arguably oils are easier on your brushes that's the other myth that we're gonna blow up here that's what I pretty much do every time I paint with oils I blow up myths uh, at least you push I just nudge it on mine sometimes and Reiner does some really nice contrast on his that's for sure uh, Draconic Visions asks, what is the snow material you are using with the siege crossbow picture so that is the secret weapon here we go it's crushed glass and the idea is that hello little hobbit spark my gun just well thank you so much for the follow Leela Hoff that is appreciated as you can see it lets me do either the white fluffy snow or the melted snow you can see I can mix it with my mud effects and then I've got my icicles on there you can really see that right there that so having the melted snow it gives me the excuse to have things like the icicles and I do that all the time here's a actually you can watch me do this again as on my YouTube channel here you can watch me using the crushed glass snow right here on this so it's, it's from secret weapon miniatures you can uh, check that out on their website uh, let's see it's definitely the value contrast they have a problem with and well that's uh that comes down to these kind of things like I'm putting purple over here 
I'm going to take more of an orange over here. Let's uh, get a touch of this. Make it so you can see that. So you get all of these different colors here in the metals. You've got greens, you got purples, you got orange, you got all this stuff all happening right there in the metals. Let's get some. Speaking of orange, let's get a little bit of that here. So what do we got there? We got green over there. And now I just put in some orange over here. And it's just it's being willing to do stuff. Where's my areas so look at the we've got this cloak right here in the darks that's actually green it's a red cloak but look at this we've got some purple here why because we got that crushed glass snow right here uh, Grumdy asks about scale 75 I don't have I have very practically no scale 75 stuff here I, I've only worked with a couple of few scale 75 paints, and that's about it. I've done stuff with the different Vallejo, uh, some of their snow things. Obviously, Woodland Scenics, and now playing around a lot with the Luke's APS stuff. But I really have done little or nothing with any kind of scale 75 stuff. The the Vallejo basing paste are probably really, really similar, if not darn near the same thing. Uh, I've, I think I'm going to have some of the MIG ammo, some of their new stuff coming in, which I'm guessing is going to be a lot like the lot like the Vallejo stuff. A couple of more shots of my dark here. I think are needed. I need to get some lighter stuff going on in the middle of the sword. That's going to be some of my cerulean blue. That's going to bring out a couple of the things here in that channel. There's uh, some runes or whatever in the middle there. Here's another case of using some of that green again essentially kind of providing almost like a color surprise for the viewer something they're not really expecting like oh well it's just a little bit of green there on the skin tone why because well there's some gold there right next to that let's do a little bit of our magenta here and then next to that, let's have some of our lighter skin tone on the knuckles. Like so. A brush for blending. Let me just get my fingers in the right spot here. So you can see that little bit of blending action going on. then okay what if we want to do some kind of tattoo stuff or whatever here let's play around with some of that so we're taking our Payne's gray here we're thinning that down okay let me get this where you can see it and make sure we don't have too much on the brush Let's do something pretty basic here. We start out with a bit of a spiral pattern. A little more here. If it's not quite blue enough, I'll take a little bit of my ultramarine blue, throw that in there. And I think we'll go one one more layer here with our little circular design and let's continue that along the arm here too and 
and we're going to give it another little bit of a twist here and mind you this is all wet oils over wet oils very wet oils over very wet oils it can be done now half of it was all designed by MIG well that's uh I, I've been telling people about the the different MIG ammo logos over the years and there's a reason why those logos are different and when I was doing my tutorial videos and I was going to have their logo on there, they'd say, no, no, that's the old logo. It's got to be this logo. I mean, what do you mean? And there were very specific reasons why they wanted me to update those logos. So here we go. Nice and easy. So there you go. Let me let me zoom in on this so you can. So there we go, right there. For those that say you can't paint detail stuff with oils, especially over wet oils, well, we kind of. There's another one of them myths that's gone up in smoke. Hashtag no myths. We're just busting all of them here. I think I'm going to, oh, let's maybe make that uh, cerulean blue here if I can. Not going to be easy. But this is what I mean about the oils and that virtually being able to blend blind. I could barely freaking reach the brush in there, but look what that let me do. If this was acrylics, that would have been a nightmare trying to paint that thing in there. Instead, it took it's a couple of brush strokes, and it's it's there, it's done, all done, taken care of. So I just I try to set these things up so that you can see, like, yeah, you can for sure paint detailed stuff like that in oils. Do I need to? I feel like I need to get some more reflected light over here. So let's see if we can do that here. Right here. Then I'm going to put a little bit of dark here. Not quite that much. All right, so I think we've got a little bit more of a turn that's happening there. I'm going to get some more of a blend in here, too. I got my blending brush. That's where we just tried chucking some of the orange a while back. We'll just extend that out a bit, and good to go. So here... I can see there's, I can actually see a brush stroke line, but it's been so long since we painted that. Look at how nice and smooth that blends out. Remember, timing is everything. We have been waiting a while to actually affect this area here, because we had done a lot of painting there in the beginning, and we're just... And trying to let that paint sit there. It's, it's that proving. We're in the proving drawer, right? I'm going to leave it sit in the proving drawer for a while. Uh, Crash and Burn asks, how did you prime the fig? So it's always Badger Stino Res. That's something that never changes. And this was just brushed on. It was not done with an airbrush. You don't have to have an airbrush for priming. It was this exact same primer right here. So Ebony Flesh. Dino Res brushed it on just like this because this was being primed exactly the same time this was. And uh, you can see it right there. So you can see some of that. That's the, the original primer still on there. I'm going to go back to some of my lighter landscape color here. Again, we're just taking this, really grinding that brush into the palette makes it as dry as possible. 
Got a little bit of what looks like a cobblestone road there. We are going to be adding a lot of foliage to this, so it's not super important to have a lot of activity on the base. Not super important. I mean, some, but again, the, the, the foliage is really going to do a lot of the work down here. I mean, save time. Ah, we're going to go back to some glazing now. We're going to take our super long, very, very long liner brush here. Oh, look at this. We're going to use some four-year-old oil paint here. This is the stuff that was in that container that I made four years ago. Let's use some of that. Why not? What could possibly go wrong? So it's going to be a nice dark brown there again. A lot of the... A lot of our thinner mixed into that. And remember, not brushing it on, just touching that brush to the surface. That's all I'm going to do. Same thing with our boot over here. We touched it a couple of times, and now we're just going to let that paint do its own thing. Now I realize it's kind of dark there as far as the light's not necessarily reaching all the way down in there. There's a lot of stuff in the way. You'll be able to see it here on this boat. And I can do a little bit of a blend. Even with that glaze, I can still blend that glaze just a bit. And I think we've, yeah, we're almost there. We just got a little bit to go here on the boot right here, on these straps right here. Some over here, and that's uh, that's going to take care of those pretty well. It's the end of that, and we'll just leave that there. And remember, all of this looked pretty much the exact same way. We let it can see how it looks almost like it's dry. It's not actually dry. It just sort of looks that way, especially by comparison to what it was a while back. Let's play with those wings a little bit here. I think I'm going to back this out and get a better view of those. Uh, Trashorama, how are you doing? Let's see, have you ever run into paint cracking issues with using primer ink? That... No, there's... I don't really do the Xenithal stuff anyway, but the the Stino Res primer, I'm generally my goal is to have at least three layers of primer, if not five, six, seven, or eight, because all of these figures, well A, they have to be shipped, and B, they're all gonna be used. They're all gonna be used for one game system or another. So that means they're going to get a, a touch of rough treatment now and then. And never had any kind of issues at all. And I use Stino Riz Primer on terrain. I use it on wood, metal, plastic, resin. The, the gaming type figures, right? Your, your zombie side and your, your different cool mini or not style games. But no, no problem at all. Uh, let's see, just about to mention how long the wings, or how I love the, how the wings look. And now I'll show you the other, the Raven figure that I did. And I think that session, the VOD of that might be expiring like today or something. But it's one that we did in, a, I think it was a late night session. Yeah, it was probably one of the late night sessions. So let's grab that one here and you can have a little comparison. And there it is on its flying base. So we're just trying to match this to our Raven. It's all part of the same army. So we did some of our you know, non-metallic metal there. Yeah, armored wolf at leather. Let's see, paint cracking issues when using primer ink zenithal priming. Yeah, that's uh, that has definitely never happened. 
and we've yeah we've a primed accent well yeah it's been used on leather it's been used on every surface you can imagine and it's worked just fine now we're gonna venture into slightly lighter so this is definitely nowhere near as finely sculpted slash cast as the dark sword so I'll just uh, flash over to that real quick this is the one that is in question so there that was the one that again a dark sword tutorial that I just did earlier today and as soon as this is done I'm gonna start uploading that to the YouTube channel so it can be there for the patrons uh, that was a see that sword there with all the magenta right next to the blues and that's one I really wish I could have done in oils I'll have to I think I still have that figure I may have to do that one again in oils just to have it oh we got Joss wisdom how are you doing uh, uh, folks be sure you give Josh a follow because he's also a fellow twitch streamer oh jpeg asked do you do a lot of primer coats I basically treat it all the same I obviously did the same thing here on my sisters same thing I, I treated my cipher lords the same way oh and this is the 3d printed resin right here so I just I do the same thing on all of them because Steinol res and I do it on terrain uh, here let me show you I'll show you some terrain now th this is another set of videos that I've got so that terrain was all done with Steinol res and that was uh, 3d printed yeah and just uh, you can kind of see it's uh, just a little bit of paint over the over the primer there well the uh, it kind of started with the the vehicle stuff when I started doing the bolt action figures, and I knew I was just going to need a hefty amount of priming there, especially on those vehicles because at the time most of them were resin and metal, and not plastic kits. So I had to come up with some rock solid way of making sure that 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 paint stayed on there, and no better way to do that than many coats of Steino res. And if I didn't have the airbrush, I would just brush it on. Actually, we had to be, I had to be convinced kicking and screaming to get an airbrush again. So we're just, uh, we're going to throw a little bit of our lighter blue in here. We're able to mix with what's already there. That Payne's Gray it's not a black it's a really nifty dark blue now there's a couple of blue colors that I'd really like to get Prussian blue and indigo blue they're they just go back to my watercolor days so part of it is nostalgia sort of like Terra Rosa and I'm just thinking well Terra Rosa was nostalgia which then turned into oh my gosh this is fantastic so I'm kind of hoping the same thing happens if I grab stuff like the indigo blue, the Prussian blue, those are really deep, rich blues, but they're way more towards the green side of things, but not a bright green. As much as I like my Payne's gray, I'm thinking that the indigo and the Prussian blue will give me even more intensity in those dark blues. Sort of like what blue liner does. Uh, let's see, Ken's airbrushes have lasted me for five years, and I work them. We work them hard. Now, for me, in general, a priming session lasts somewhere between three to six hours. That's a priming session. Because I'm priming not just miniatures, but terrain, all kinds of stuff. And that's, well, that's, that's the advantage of the airbrush is that you can do a lot of stuff in a hurry. I actually have a video on the YouTube channel that's all about priming. It's literally a couple of hours of me just priming stuff in different ways, different colors. Some of it's Song of Ice and Fire units. 
some of it, one of it's a it's a big giant resin monster or something like that. Some of it's vehicles. I think some of it's terrain. It's been a while, so I don't remember. As you can see, yeah, we're starting to pick up some of our stuff on the wings here. We'll do the same over here. And again, it's it's the cerulean blue is also mixing with some of the colors that we have here already, which is very handy. Oh, is that right? Uh, in Danthrone Blue, I haven't heard of that. Was that a, is that a Windsor Newton one? Because I don't remember seeing that, or did I? In the on the Dick Blick list of the Windsor Newton colors, I will I will look, I will look. I know I've got about six or seven more Windsor Newton oils in my Dick Blick cart there. I run it well. I've, I got to finish stuff like this if I'm going to have the funds to get those. So that's kind of why I'm doing this, is so that I actually can get the funds to be able to get those additional oil paints. I mean, if that's if you're wondering where things like all of the the cheers and the bits and the subs go, it goes to stuff like that, because those are the kind of colors that I'm going to experiment with, on stuff like this in front of as many eyeballs as I can. Again, not quite so, not sculpted quite so nifty as, say, that Dark Sword figure's wing, so we're we're gonna have to draw in a little more texture here. Whereas the Dark Sword one, all it was was just work with the texture and be done with it. This one, not so, not quite so simple not quite so simple so and this is pretty much I'll just try and make something like that I'm gonna take some of that black and some of the ultramarine blue we'll mix those together okay that is sort of now a bit like an indigo blue Is it thin enough? No, nope, not quite thin enough. And I'm also going to grab my Series 7 over here. I'll thin it down some more. And there we go. So this is basically me painting in detail that's kind of not really there. I'm just going to have to sort of make it up as I go along because there is no center spine here on any of these feathers. I just have to paint that in. And this is why the more nicely sculpted slash cast a figure is, the less time it takes to paint, because you don't have to screw around like this. get some more of this. Again, that's the, the black and the ultramarine blue combined to sort of give me a bit of an indigo type color. We're starting to get some more definition now in our feathers. By thinning that down, if it was too thick, that was not going to cover there because we have relatively thick paint there. This is also a little bit more of a reddish blue than say if I had used the Payne's Gray. The Payne's Gray is also on the translucent side. This is a little bit less translucent. So look at all of these nifty, yeah, see our feathers actually a little more structure to them. Ah, oh, the Gamlin has it but more muted than Ultramarine. Well at some point, well you know, we've been talking about it. I've, I've got to try the Gamlins too. I know that must have been that must have been a little bit like Christmas when those was it six new was it eight six or eight new paints that you got there that came in just last week I, I know for me anytime at this point now anytime anything oil paint ever arrives here I will be joyous oh speaking of uh, joyousness so that we've got a couple of things. The 
we will be doing neck runs in oils and neck runs in oils with true metallic metals we're going to be doing several different types of neck runs not just the you know your typical shiny metal types but we are definitely going to be doing lots of experimentation we're going to be painting a bunch of well primaris marines and i guess uh was it three bikes come bit with that box so that could be really fun doing some bikes and oils yeah see look at how we're just we're going back here we're getting some nice definition on that oh so you got nine of them okay i don't know why i thought it was eight maybe you just uh Oh, that, well, probably because that's what I had. That was my last, uh, yeah, okay. It was my last order. It had eight in it. Now I know. Uh, like I say, hey, it, it's been, uh, don't always get much sleep. <laughs> I forget things. Or things get modified in my head. Look at what we're doing here. So there's no, there's nothing here. We just made that. That was not there. That's just me virtually drawing it, and it's pretty much a flat shape right there. So is this. So just like our, our little tattoo that we stuck on the arm there, you can do detailed stuff with the oils. It's all about the timing. Oh, thanks, Achilles Blade. Uh, PB60, it's ingredient in muted turquoise from Liquitex. So, yeah, now were we talking in your one stream about the, the secret code on the Liquitex containers? Because Peter and I, we were having a big conversation about, about those, you know, pigment yellow. At first we thought it was purple yellow because, well, the first time we picked up the P, it was actually in a paint that had purple in it. But that's pigment yellow 65. And it was interesting to see which ones had linseed oil and or safflower oil the ones that had just safflower oil were a huge surprise because we thought okay the glossier paints have linseed oil the more matte paints have safflower and i think it was just the opposite the terra rosa actually has nothing but linseed oil linseed oil and no safflower oil go figure so look at ah, look at that a lot more shape in that wing now Let's uh let's go back over here and let's keep going. Uh, let's keep going with that. Ah, uh, let's see. It's always Jim's fault. Oh, uh, I uh, prime an entire Baratheon army coming up. Yep. Yeah. Well, geez, I already I already dealt with Baratheons. No more Baratheons for a while. Actually, what I am going to be doing is a a you know what ton of the of the Targaryens, and not just the horses either, um, some of the infantry as well. Actually, what's the other? Th oh, yeah, I've got to take some of the, let's see, Blood Rage, and what's the other one? Uh, Rising Sun, I'm going to be doing some army painting tutorials on those. Now be part of the Patreon page series, of course. Because you've got the multiples, right? I think there's between like some of the character figures and the regular guys, there's nine, something like nine or ten individual infantry. Here we're gonna get some of this. Now I'm doing that darker. I'm just gonna sneak some of that into the the head crest here too, just cause. Why not? Hashtag why not? Hashtag who cares? <laughs> well, you guys basically figure, and I'll I'm gonna let this just sit here for a second. Maybe even get something to drink here. Let's see, where's my necrons? Where's my necron? Ah, here we go. So this was done in acrylics, but that's TMM with object source lighting. So why not do that in oils? Because, you know, why not? I mean, check out, uh, see how fun that would be. And these things are ancient. These were eBay rescue. They were horrible. 
I had to basically file the glue off of them. Now we've got brand new Necrons. That's going to be very fun. I think we'll maybe stick with the same basing regime, but definitely, definitely try out some oils on those. Now the key is going to be, and I don't know if this is going to work, we're going to find out the hard way, maybe, but we got these oil brushers here. So what, there's silver, steel, aluminum. So one of these, or all of these, is going to have to act like the metallic medium. We'll see if they do that. I have no idea. They may not work. All I know is that the Windsor Newton metallic paints do not work, like, at all. I mean, they're terrible. Uh, they're not meant for miniatures, obviously. So it's not a huge surprise. Ah, uh, yeah, the I have an entire box of Optilung paints here, and I tried using those, and oh, they got they got thrown in the penalty box real quick. Like those were to to say they were a colossal disappointment would be an understatement. Those things were. They were glossy, they were nasty, they just, woof. Now I have, oh, where is it? They, they said, well, if you use this, then they'll act more like the Mig Ammo oil brushers. And I said, well, I have Mig Ammo oil brushers, and I also made my own paint. Why do I need something like this to make them work correctly? So that was that was a major disappointment. Now I still have those. I still have them. And... I will I'll give him another shot because well it just took me a while to get that particular thing that you just saw there so I'll give him another shot it's I have them so why not but that was yeah <laughs> I was like and this is what everybody's so excited about with these things this is what they're excited about so yeah that was that was unfortunate uh, let's see, I'm curious on the oil brushers. Uh, actually, the oil brushers, that was the first... Uh, what you've seen, did you see the Mountains Men series, Nestor? Because that was mostly the oil brushers on them, and that's that's where I noticed that the oil paint could be not shiny. It's just, uh, to me, I, I like having some control over the thickness of it. And the other thing too is that not every oil brusher is the same. Some of the oil brushers, like the black one and the dark green, actually a lot of the darker oil brushers act really strange. But those, yeah, oh my gosh. I, I forget what was, that was something that I was working on. I don't think I have it here to see. The, yeah, the Optilungs, ugh. I just I didn't even like the texture of them as they they went on. It they seemed really slimy. And that that's when I just said, "Okay, I'm making my own." I just said, "Enough of this. This is stupid. Why am I screwing around with other people's stuff when I could just make my own and make it exactly the way I want it?" And also, I was really done with oil paint and tubes. Oh, I got brush craft in the house. How are you doing? Yeah, let's uh, toss a couple. Yeah, now that we got our finer brush, now that we've gone in and sort of refined some of the darks, let's pick out a couple of lights here. Because yeah, like Drax, like you say, everybody loves those things, and they talk about them all the time. And I was excited to have them. And they look, you know, they look really fantastic, right? Now Bilbo's brush. Wanted to check out Wappleville. Okay, we had this early on. Now, I promise I will add some more screens here. And you, those of you on Saturday that heard the story about Wappleville and how that started, well, many, many years ago, here's a little view into Wappleville. There you go. So there you, you're standing on the Wappleville train station platform right now, and then you're looking out over the town, and you've got the... The Undertaker's office there, you've got the police station, 
and you also have see that pink building over there that that is Le Flamant Rose that is the house of horizontal refreshment uh, you can see we've got a, some railroad tracks there that run to the station there's your jail over there there's your church and all of those figures that's all from Wild West Exodus I will be adding many more slides of this to the my channel here let's look at some some of the figures that we used in our games and these are take a look at those bases all that that stuff that you see on the base all that MDF terrain that wood terrain that's just me taking all those extra pieces and combining them to make some really fun nifty bases so yeah that was uh, here's a couple of characters that were some of the inhabitants of Wappleville here's the Worcester sisters so when they were at their finishing school, they were in their laboratory, and they, as you can see, they liked working with rats, and they they made themselves some pets. So these are bombshell miniatures with a couple of Reaper miniatures, bones, rats, added on for a little bit of uh, extra flavor, so to speak. Uh, I, think I'm, I think I'm caught up on everything. You know, actually, uh, what was interesting about the Optilungs is they had some of the, the brighter colors, too. Like, uh, I guess they're kind of considered the mecha paints, right? Man, I've, I've got some of them. I can... Like I said, I didn't just... I didn't chuck them in the garbage. I still got them here. And who knows? You know, maybe it does... The exact same thing that this does when I add it to my just regular oil paints here. It kind of makes sense. I'll, I'll give you a heads up when I'm going to give those things a try. So that we can see if there's any difference. If you want to see the episode where I was using them, that's on my YouTube channel. It was a YouTube Live. And I was, I was trying to mask my... Uh, displeasure with them oh just building some space marines to try doing blood ravens and oils uh, i am uh geez i think now i'm gonna do the rubik marines and oils too yeah because i was gonna do another army painting series on rubik marines i think they'll have to be done in oils i was gonna be doing them in acrylics but with all the changes happening there, I think we'll we're just gonna go to something like oils where I have complete control over everything. I think that's what I'm gonna do. Just like I'm gonna keep adding a couple of these. There is no sculpted texture there, as in like zero sculpted texture. So I'm just adding it in myself. Well, that's uh, complete. This is like a a double cast right here. There's like two feathers here instead of just a one. Uh, Blood ravens are rumored to be from Thousand Sun Gene Seed, so that would be cool to see. Uh, and Mellow Mishaps loves the weak look of these wings. Yeah, I was just trying to get as close as I could to my to that raven that I painted a couple of weeks ago on a live stream. Let's uh, bring down a little bit of our titanium white here. Let's uh, pop a couple of lights on some of our metals again. Now that we've so we've gotten some some look on the wings here, let's go back to our armor again. To the shield. Possibly even throw some more lights. Maybe even on the face too. Ooh, let's do a little bit of extension on these. Wow, they kind of ended a little bit abruptly there. I think that's that's a little better. Well, you know, what? let's get some of our lighter blue on this shield here. We're missing. We are lacking some of that little ultramarine blue in there. That's the cerulean blue. That's the ultramarine blue. 
And now that we've got all the, the darks in our wood grain, we can go back in here now. And start to build this up once more. A little lighter now. Like so. Yeah, now we've got, it looks like wood grain before. It didn't really look blue, didn't really look like it had much wood grain in it. Now it's got all of the above. Mostly focusing on the upper reaches of the shield here, obviously. I'll put a couple of strands here. Of that blue on the wood. If the color goes somewhere, it must go everywhere. That's book one. Or that's chapter one of your book of Wapo right there. And of course we've got our New Testament that's that's coming up now. All the all the sage Hello little hobbits, spark my ganja. All the sage bits of 3D printing wisdom as we welcome in Gerald Power. Thank you so much for the follow. That is appreciated. That is very much appreciated. So there we go. That shield had really nothing going on. Didn't take much. Remember we did a little bit of a glaze thing there. We still got all of those other colors involved. Very nice. Maybe I'm going to see what I can do for lighter stuff on this here. As I'm keeping a little bit of the magenta in there so that doesn't get too... I just wanted to get pink. Which means a little bit of orange goes in there too. Let's see what we can do on this hair. There, that's better. Yes, thank you. That's what we needed. And I can certainly go a lot lighter here. Uh, actually, let's see. Track, are you going to be going live tonight in the evening hour? Or is it going to be tomorrow? Now, I'm, I'm assuming that tonight, no. Yeah, yeah. You should be doing one of your late night sessions, right? Hopefully I can join you on the Discord there because... Well, I'm going to be uploading a video anyways right after this, so I don't know if it'll be loaded by the time I would normally record stuff. But just, uh, yeah, let us know if tonight is going to be part of your regularly scheduled pro... Oh, yep, later tonight. Okay, that's good. So everybody, be sure to catch Drax later on tonight because, well, you want to see more of the Queen of Onslaught. And a very cool color scheme. You'll be able to check it out there. Because, well, that's what I'm doing. <laughs> that's where I'm going to be. I, I I ain't missing that. So if you haven't already followed Drax, be sure to. Because then you won't miss the alerts when that happens. Unless, of course, Twitch decides to unfollow you like it's it seems to be doing like in in droves lately. I know a few people have said what the theories are, the reasons why that happens. Do I need to? Yes, yes, I need to get some reflected light. And by reflected light, I mean some of this green again. These are unusually placed scales here for scale. Now that I'm thinking about this, they're usually it's more like a like the classic sort of brick pattern. This is not quite the brick pattern. This is a, a little bit unusual here. Oh yeah, these these gemstone things over here that are ultramarine blue. Let's make a a lighter ultramarine blue, shall we? And we'll hit some of these 
gemstones here. Let's uh, go a little bit later on the other side of them. Classic gemstone style. I guess if I'm going to be painting Lumineth in oils, there'll be plenty of gemstones, right? Or what? It, not seeing stone. What the heck do they call those? Soul stones or something like that, right? I know that was the thing with the Elder. I don't know if... Don't know if your little fantasy elves, AOS elves, have the same deal going on. That's where those, like Drax and such, who know way more about AOS than me, they're the ones I'm going to ask. Ether Quartz, okay. Oh, thanks, Kilvadia. Yeah, that was... I've been I was looking forward to doing that one that little tattoo there for a while I, <clears throat> actually oh here's another fun spot let's do another one so we are going to take that same Payne's gray oh touch of the ultramarine blue I think that is thinned down sufficiently now <clears throat> interestingly enough we let's grab our this one here so there we did our tattoos. That was done with the Leviathan Blue Contrast Paint. Now, now we're using oil paint over wet paint. And again, everybody that uh, did the subscribing thing earlier today, you should see in your email box, I sent you the video where I was doing these tattoos in oil on an oil painted figure. So you should be seeing that in your in your mailbox there, whatever you use for your Twitch email. I think that was about an hour or so before I started here, so around four hours ago. Oh, Big Svalour, how are you doing? Thanks for joining us. So here again, we're just going to take this. We're going to put a little bit of a twist on it. Can I zoom in here? Or my zoom? No, I can zoom in farther. Okay, boom. There we go. Uh, let's zoom in a little bit here for some tattoo stuff. Let's build off of that. Like you do. Like this. Just curve around that. Follows the line of our initial little swirl, and then down this way. I'm going to have a line come from over here that plays off of that line. And then we'll have another set of lines and if I don't like these the best thing is I just take my blending brush and I just blend them away they're gone they are just they're just they don't exist anymore they're kaput and now I'm going to here let's uh, give this another little twist on it over here and take away some of that excess give that a nice little twist right here So we've added some more of our little tattoo type stuff going on here. Maybe this. Yeah, I just want to continue that pattern around there. Looking at this, I think I'm going to get some more of my light highlights too on the armor maybe. Because I think that paint has had a chance to, yeah, that's had a chance to cure a little bit. So let's throw in a couple of lighter touches here some of our yeah let's get the, now this is sort of in shadow so not too much mm, I like I want to get some of this very interesting sort of pinkish orange on some of these Armor plates up here, they're facing towards the the sky. And re 
remember what this looked like when we did that that nasty dark glaze over it looked absolutely horrible but we're using that glaze we're we're still working off of that about an hour and a half later or so I'm oh, still a rebel how are you doing uh, just uh just in time for some fun oil painting freehand well all freehand is fun but doing the oil painting freehand over wet oil paint that is extra fun like extra extra fun And now I'm just uh, going to play some of my, some of the scale mail here, changing some of it from the greenish stuff to something that's got a little more of an orange flavor to it. It's still citrus, though. And I, can, I see I'm running into some of my, the purple ones that I did. That's cool. What's happening here? We need, I think we've done a lot with the dark. We've, we're going to just go, let's grab some of our and titanium white here. That's what, that is, I can just, I can see it right now. Before I even put this on here, I can see there is a lack of very bright highlights on this. Well, we're about to rectify that now. I believe I either have to thin this down more or make it thicker. One or the other. Making it thinner because now it just it's sticking there. So I just had to make it thinner. And now I'm starting to get some definition there. The magenta and that black were really a fun combination, so I will do that again. We're also gonna make it real thin like Oh, Creature Caster had to step away. Oh, thanks. Yeah, we just uh, did a little more of our wet into wet freehand designs here. And now we're just uh, we're going back into some of our some of our metals here. We're starting to this is the area where I did those nasty glazes. You can see we've got some greens in there, some oranges. It's all about that timing. We have got to let these sit for for enough time. It's that's what I just call it putting in the proving drawer. All right, we got this nifty purple over here, and the big challenge is going to be, and I don't even know if you can see it. Ah, better. I gotta do the same over here. Okay, yeah, because there was just this big blob of dark there. That that just wasn't gonna work. Can't just have a big old blob of dark in there. That's better. Okay, now it's... She just kind of... Yeah, it was like her eyes were part of the goggles. And that wasn't working. That wasn't what we wanted. Uh, I really am enjoying this quinacrinome and black combination here. I get the underside of her lips. So we we spent a fair amount of time here. So the wings were really nasty. I mean, there's basically no sculpting on there. So I was essentially just going here and drawing in shape. I just I had to basically draw it all back in by hand because there wasn't much there to work with. Now on the sword here, same kind of thing. We we put our lights in there. Now we're going to go with our darks. And then we've got to do some blending on that too. So again, we, we clean out our brush very thoroughly. I mean, look at the thorough cleaning we give to that. And that's it. Do not be sticking it in your, in your white spirits to do that kind of cleaning. We don't want to do that. We just want to make a nifty little blending brush out of it there. That's all we wanted. Again, get that paint off of there. Do some more blending. Get that paint off of there. Go back and do some more. All of this, this has had an opportunity to really sit here for a while. Which means now when I go to blend this, we're not going to get those same kind of brush strokes. If we had just kind of 
had at it right away, and if we were like hobbitses and we were too hasty, we would not enjoy this wonderful ability to blend this with having no nasty brush marks. Don't be hasty. Don't be hasty. So another area here. Then I can do some blend. It's going to get uh, some more of the paint out of the brush there. This is less about actually blending the color, and it's as much about essentially buffing out some of the brush strokes. Where you can see some of those. If you try and do that too fast, like I'm telling you, it ain't going to end well for you. Oh, we got John Ninas. How are you doing? Trixie Hobbit says, yes, indeed. Yeah, and this is an ancient tube. Look at this thing. This is at least 25 years old. And somehow Kathy had the gigantic freaking... That's 200 milliliters. That's probably as much if you were to take one of those entire sets of 10. Actually, it is. Because that's 170 milliliters. Combined, all 10 paints. Oh, my goodness. You know, actually... You know, let's, let's see if we can do some kind of freehand on our... Yeah, let, let's uh, let's play around with this. There's just... Ah, let's do something there. I have no idea what it's going to be yet. Don't ask me. I don't... Oh, wait a minute. I think I do know. Wait a minute. One second. Unfor oh, I don't have those miniatures in here. Darn it. Well, hopefully this uh, all becomes obvious, what we're trying to do here. In a jiffy. We're going to do the j just like we did with our tattoos. Thinning this down. Let's do some freehand again. Okay. Don't mind if it actually fades out where we've got some of the shading. So now we've kind of completed our little twirl here. Let's get a point on this. Like so. So let's just do a, a bunch of little uh, freehandy things, because why not? And we'll go back in here. We'll put another little... Now this is going to be a different, different pattern here. So instead of a a little bit of a circular, circular twist there. We made that a bit sharper. We'll have another one go like this. That one can have a little bit of a twist on it there. So, there we go. Uh, let's see. Let's just let me pick up some new mini through site. Uh, lots of them have been calling. Uh, is that a semi-transparent gallon of magenta? That's just a big old tube of cranacrino magenta that for some reason my wife got for art school a bazillion years ago. And I have... She has told me what that was all about and, and why she needed to get that, but it's still pretty hilarious. That all these years later we have it. So here's a... Well, let's... Let's show, there, there, this is the newest thing that will be coming up. This is the Queen of Onslaught right here. And this uh, you can still see the post-action report here. I was painting this on my live stream just on Saturday. And actually, this is a three-part tutorial series for the Patreon page. About eight and a half, eight hours, 40 minutes combined of video on that. This was painted actually on the 4th of July, so you can go back and watch that. This will also be on my YouTube channel. And then this is another one of the, I think, the new figures coming up right here. So 
very fun. That's uh, more your infantry size type of a thing. Let's go back to our... Let's get back to our free hand. Where else can we sneak in some pattern? I'm just going to sneak in some... Oh, over here. I think you can see it. So we're going to start out, as always, a little bit of a circular twist here. Let's continue this a little more. And you see, I'm not doing this absolutely everywhere. It's not happening all over this. It's just happening in a few places. I'm going to take this. Sometimes it's connect the swirls. That's a new game. It's a new freehand game. There we go. Connect the swirls. But to me, this is now going to be much more interesting than just a bunch of well, cerulean blue and ultramarine blue shading. I mean, not that that's horrible. It is not super interesting. And I'm basically just going to draw this to where it is easiest for me to do it. Why would I try and have this down into the darkest crevices of a fold? I'll just do it where it's easiest for me to see it. And hopefully you can see it too. I think you can... Yeah, we're going to sneak some in right over here. Now this is interesting. Okay. I'm going to change attack my attack pattern here. I'm going to go thicker with this. And look at that. Remember that thick paint sticks over thinner paint? Well, there you go. I was thinning that down and thinning that down and no paint was sticking. Look what happens. So I'm going to go back over here now. And watch what happens. Uh, yeah, look at that. It doesn't make any sense. Yet that's how it goes. Actually, absolutely thick paint there. And I don't mean right out of the tube thick. But see, look at how I'm getting a much cleaner line there. I bet you anyway, if I go down here and do the same thing, I'll get the same result. Sure enough, I do. Yep, look at that. I, I just I had to not have as much of the white spirits in the paint. There is no formula, guys. There's no formula to this. It's all very much a by feel kind of a thing. But the paint always lets you know, did I not say? The paint will let you know when it's got to be thinner or when it's got to be thicker. And in that case, that was the paint basically kicking me in the Julies saying, uh, you know, you need that paint to be thicker. And this was me just like, wow, what, what's what's hitting me in the golden spot there? What? Why is that? Uh, why does that hurt all of a sudden? That's because it was the miniature saying, nope, what are you doing? Yeah, <laughs> a good problem for you to have. I, I'm gonna keep going with this thicker paint because clearly. That is sticking just fine. Sneaking a little bit of a twist there. Another one right here. And again, look at that. The thicker paint really does an amazing job sticking to that. Who'd have thought that I should listen to the things that I say all the time? Might want to try that. As I just kind of work my way through some more of these swirls here. Which now leads me to some more of the metals that I got to do over here. Because we haven't done much with this, like at all. 
in quite a while so let's uh, and this is another area where you're getting kind of squishy with some of the details here so I'm gonna have to paint some things in maybe and you could see that how easy it is with that with the oil paint to be able to paint them even when the oil paint is much thicker it's not super watery that was not watery oil paint whatsoever yet it stuck very nicely to where I needed it to oh I'm gonna go back to some of my green here right in here few of these again it's the the wings are kind of casting some light down on that so it, I think that needs to happen we're gonna get some reflections of our blue cloth on these guys here it's got to be careful though because something that's reflected really shouldn't be well definitely should not be brighter than what it is reflecting to make sure these are just muted enough yet still have a similar enough blue to what's right by here but again these are supposed to be shiny how the heck are they not reflecting all that blue that's sitting right there I, I see this all the time and that goes for non-metallic or for uh, the, the TMM for metallics too because you can do object source lighting and you can do color reflections and stuff uh, let, let's see if I can find the which dark sword one is that? I think ah that way so look at that figure I know it's kind of small on the far left over there with the red cloak the Jamie Lannister you can see there is red reflecting on the metal armor that's TMM that red was painted on that's not just his red cloak reflecting on metallic paint that was actually painted on it's actually painted on there do I dare go any lighter here with my fact that that's it that's as far as I'm going with that I am however going to lighten some of the yellow here again some more of those scale pieces here on the scale mail this is the the tricky part where I basically have to paint in the texture because it's completely lost there is nothing there just like the wings I mean you just you hope that you don't run into that too many places but and that is kind of that that can happen with the resin miniatures where you just run into your area it's like what the heck happened over here that the cast slipped maybe something happened some kind of distortion happen it's bound to happen with resin miniatures you know what I will just a couple of yep I like that I like that purple let's get some some of this back into the mix here just a few of those and something on that I guess that's supposed to be kind of a gold there oh I need some lighter skin on the hand over here let's do that let's do that some knuckles here we did it on the upper side of the hand but we kind of forgot about down here handle the sword sword hilt and then this needs some some kind of a gold or whatever like there maybe even a little more yes that could also use some gold what is happening over here not a lot A small blending brush a 
better there. Get some of my couple of lights here again in that the handle of that sword on her hand. I need to get some lighting on the under part of this sword too, good grief. Like right here. That is helpful. This needs to be spread out. What about that? Ah, okay. We need to do something. In the Look at this. Talk about your blind blending. That was actually a, somehow a chunk of white paint that really shouldn't have been there. I just took it and... Oh, look, now I have some really nifty metallic <laughs> metal there. I'm telling you, it's the oils. It's, it's so easy, it's sinful. That, that's got to be, that's got to be a TV commercial for the Wapple paints. And obviously some kind of, uh, an evening wear of some type. Some kind of an evening jacket. With some kind of, uh, 70s jazz playing or something like that. Maybe even a certain type of mustache that, uh, <laughs> yeah kind of the hairy chest and everything. That's that's setting the scene for you. There's a tableau. That'll sell those oil paints right good. I'm trying to keep this out of the way of the reference picture that's there. But just a little touch of the wood grain texture there on the inside. So now we got wood grain texture on the outside and on the inside. Wow, well, is it blends so easy? It's sinful. Either that or it's, uh, what are some of the ice creams, right, that are so decadent, they're sinful? Like some of those, like, gourmet ice creams or something like that? Or we just do both. We do both kind of commercials. because it, it, it is, all kidding aside, I keep just finding out how much easier it is to do things in oils. And I just wonder why in the world did I not start doing this, like from the beginning? But then I didn't know. I think it was about four years ago, this winter maybe, yeah. So just a few months from now, ah, you know what, that needs to be more greenish. Just a few months from now, I want to say something like October-ish, late October, maybe early November. That'll pretty much mark the four-year anniversary of the discovery of oils for painting miniatures. And it was, now this again, this was somebody doing historical figures, but it was a, it was one of those big old T-35 tanks, huge T-35. is was painting one of its five turrets, and he was using regular Winsor Newton oil paints. And I said, it was that whole, it comes in pints thing. It was a comes in pints moment. And I said, wait a second. What's he doing there? So I saw that and I said, I got to try this. And I, I did it on several vehicles and it was a blast. I thought, okay, it's good for vehicles. What about infantry? What about miniatures? Not just vehicles. And the first time I tried it was on a bunch of U.S. infantry for bolt action and a process that normally would have taken me a good 8 to 12 hours took two and a half hours. And I went, well, wait a minute. What just happened there? What just happened? Now, yep, Magneras, I've been having a heck of a time getting oils to go on opaque, even when mixing two paints they are supposed to be opaque. Part of that is it's going to be how much paint you've got in the brush. And just like here with the you know, some of the freehand. We'll do some more freehand over here just to kind of show you that. But we have a book of Wapple Redemption, and we have a chapter that we did not read, and it's from Grumdy. Let's, uh, let's go all the way to chapter 20 of the tome. You don't build a house 
starting with the roof. What did we do with this miniature? We didn't start out painting any kind of detail, right? We had to the whole first 40 minutes of it. All we were doing was basically just painting a bunch of dark stuff on here. It looked like nothing. We had to do all of that stuff. All of that stuff. And let's just do one more here. When in doubt, always simplify. And we've been doing that here, right, with our with our designs on the cloak. Uh, Still a Rebel asks, uh, in one of the previous streams you were giving advice on how to get started with oils, where to get them, price. So act, now if you uh, give me a little PM or a whisper or something like that, and I can show you. So this is a set. You can just get this on Amazon here. Just look up Winton or Windsor Newton oil sets. It's a set of 10. This should be somewhere between 26 and 30 dollars, depending on where you live. I used this for a good two years before I ever got any other paints. Now, these are from Dick Blick, right? Those are your full-on tubes, but after you try the starter set, then you know what you want more of or what you want to try. This is the other critical thing right here. The company is Speedball. It, it's it's a big company. You should be able to find this. I got this on Amazon. We also got this at Michael's Art Store. So you could, should be able to find it in many different places. If you're in Europe and you can't get either of those, you should most definitely be able to get this, which is very similar to this. To me, I like this better than this, but this is still, it's not a bad, if you can't get this, the other is fine. And you know you can get it in Europe there. Uh, let's see. Yes, yes, we're, we're preaching. We're preachifying and testifying because that's what I do. That's probably why in the Deadlands game I played a preacher. And that's that's what he did. He he preached. Now, let's, uh, so this is, again, this is my basically right out of the, no, not right out of the tube, my 50% out of the tube, no additional thinning besides that. This is over wet oil paint here. But you see how I'm going back? I only do a little bit. I go back, I get some more. Like so. Go back, we get some more. I'll twist it this way, then you don't get quite so much of a glue on it. Do another little bit of a twist here again. Like you do. Poof, there we go. 